Hey everybody, welcome to another round of Kanji Plays. <sighs> Sorry, I had to run up the stairs. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh yeah, 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 I gotta get, I gotta get back, I gotta get back. So, uh, welcome to another round of Kanji Plays. Today, we are getting into D100 Dungeon. Um, this is continuing on the month of roll and write and print and play games. Uh, D100 Dungeon is a little bit of both, right? There's, you have to print it out. But you also roll dice and play through it. So it's a little bit of roll and write, print and play how it goes. Um, we, I have, I have procured, <laughs> I'm using that word procured, uh, some uh, additional kind of upgrade enhancements so we can, so you can see it at, I'll show you what it is at its core, but we'll be using the upgrades to show you what you can get if you choose to do that. Uh, Hurt, so it ought to be fun. Kate, how's it going? Early caffeine sleep. I agree. I had my uh, had my coffee this morning, so I'm I'm up. I'm awake. I'm awake. Uh, Mike, what's going on? Caffeine is life juice. You are correct. It's not aspergillum juice, but it's life juice. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So we're gonna get into this. Uh, I'm gonna run through. Kind of, um, I, I in the description I've I've put like the links to all the things I bought to do the upgrade. You can take a look at it and see if it's something that kind of um, rings sits well with you or not. Uh, I I did get the play mat. It, it's a game tracker mat. You'll see it when we get down to the table. I delete from the game crafters. They take a little bit of time to print stuff out, but it works. It's functional for what I need, so it'll be good. And we'll get to see that when we get down to the table. Uh, before we begin, a couple of announcements. Number one, we hit 800 subs. Woohoo! So, there will be the 800 sub celebration that we'll be doing. Uh, a lot of people said they want to see me paint <laughs> on stream. I'll do what you want me to do, but I'm just letting you know, like, I need a magnifying glass to paint. So, there may be times where I'm painting and you're not zoomed in because I can't, I'm, I'm old and I'm blind. So therefore, I would be looking at, you know, the painting through a magnifying glass. But I'll hold it out probably as best as I can to make things show up. But 800 subs. I want to say thank you to my Patreons. Thank you to my YouTube subscribers. And if you're neither and just coming to hang, hang in, thank you as well just for popping by and saying what's up. I could not have gotten this far. I've never even dreamed of getting this far without you. I know that there are content creators in the, in the thousands and hundreds of thousands of subs. My 800 is beautiful. It's wonderful. I am happy with it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. <coughs> Road to 80k. Ooh, I don't know if I'll ever get there, but I, I am so grateful for the 800. Like to me, 800 is 8 million. So I am very, very grateful. Thank you so all for um, believing in me and just giving me a shot and coming to join at the table and subscribing. I appreciate. It. Uh, this month also marked the two-year anniversary of me being a content creator. Like, two years ago, I made a very horrible video of me playing Unbroken. And I say horrible only because it was me getting started. You could zip back in and scroll all the way as far as you can go to see, to see that. But that was my first foray into the content creator space. And since then, we have we've played on the tiny table, right? Uh, I don't know if, and then from moving from the tiny table, uh, which was a four by two foot table, <laughs> and since then, uh, coming into, uh, moving into my new home and getting a table made by a really great dear friend of mine who built the table for me. Oh, I, I bought, I actually went out, bought the wood and worked with him and he and I built the table together. And so to this new table and the new equipment that we have, yeah, no problem, no problem. Yeah, the tiny table days, Kate remembers, Kate remembers. And, and so it's just been a good ride, and I want to keep, I wanna keep, keep on the ride because I, I think it's fantastic and fun. I love reading chat and seeing how things are going. Hey, Pontus, what's going on? Welcome, pull up a chair. And I, I really appreciate every friend and every, every person I've met. Um, I'm planning to start doing the convention circuit now, so I'll be at Gen Con this year. This will be my first ever Gen Con that I've ever been to. So if, you, if you're if you going and you see me out there, just 
come over and then let's hug it out because thank you so much i appreciate you uh let's see that's two years 800 subs thank you my patrons thank you my youtube subscribers i appreciate you so much um and we're continuing on like i said the month of rolling right so it ought to be fun good stuff to get into okay Hmm. This uh, I I think it's been interesting because um I've never prior to starting this this month I think the only roll and ride I played was Woods and I had fun with it but I was just like okay well that's a, that's a roll and ride okay cool but since then I started digging into and I start seeing these other roll and rides that are available there is a Arkham Horror roll and ride oh yes. There's an Eldritch Horror rolling right. There's like so many, um, so many devs, indie devs who've created rolling rights and posted them on Board Game Geek for you to try out and, and give a play to. And those things have been pretty, pretty cool. So it ought to be, it ought to be good. It ought to be good. Just you know, don't sleep on it. I'm saying, don't you know, in this in this world of Kickstarters where there's massive amounts of plastic, you know, miniatures, miniatures galore. Take all the minis. You miss out on the nice, tight mechanics of, like, a ni nice, tight gameplay of good mechanics, which comes with, like, rolling rights and prints of play. We don't, they don't have the minis to, to say that this is a distraction, so don't look at these, these bad mechanics. It's more, it's more, okay, well, we have, um, uh, we don't have that stuff, so therefore we have to make sure our mechanics are on point. And I really appreciated that. Great. Okay, I've talked enough. You want to see this game, that's what you're here for. Let's get some information. Let's get down. <laughs> Before I do that, though, I'm not, I'm not pausing for stuff. I, I, I got to give a shout out. I wrote this in his Discord, and I'm going to shout it out here, too. I want to give a huge shout out to Rob and Nell from Rob's Gaming Table because I was thinking of doing this stuff. I've been watching, you know, I got turned on to their channel through watching the Great Wall playthrough. And I was thinking of doing this stuff, but I was super nervous about it because I was like, you know, what if the other kids don't like me? <laughs> what if I suck at it? What if I'm not good? And uh, they, they were very encouraging and they were like, you know, you, you'll never, you know, you'll miss, you'll miss the shots, you, you know, 100% of the shots you never take. You, you just got to go out and do it. And so... I took a shot at it, and I've been in it for two years, and it's been amazing. So huge shout out to Rob Mel. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, Cynthia, what's going on? All righty. Y'all want to see this game? Let's see this game. Okay. D100 Dungeon came out in 2017. It was released, um, it got a 7.8 on Board Game Geek. <laughs> Is there cards to cheat? Wait, is there cards to cheat is one, two? I don't get that one, Robert, but welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Um, so D100 Dungeon uh, came out in 2017. It was 7.8 on Board Game Geek. Old school dungeon delving without the need for a GM or friends. <laughs> in the world of solo play, this game shines supreme. So you don't need a, you don't need a, a dungeon master or a game master. Or friends. I mean, you know, we're playing it together. We're all playing at the table. So you're my friends. You have no choice. And uh, uh, 594 people rated this game a 7.8. This is a true solo game. This is a solo dungeon crawling game of dice rolling, percentile dice play. So you'll, if, you've, if you play a game like Folklore, um, you know about the percentile dice, and we'll talk about how I factor in what's what's a hundred. So we'll talk about that as well. Uh, is there cards to cheat in one two? Oh, <laughs> uh, so it's true solo, uh, best played that way, and that's what we will. It can last five minutes because you can die really quick, or it can last ninety minutes to where you achieve your objective and almost die really quick. Age, uh, the group says age 10 plus, the community says 12 plus, because there's a lot of tables that you're going to be rolling on. A lot of tables. But it's okay. And you'll see why as we go through. We're going to walk through. Oh, we're <laughs> of course, Mike, of course. Uh, the weight's about a 2.88 because 
I think that number is going to steady keep rising as new versions of this game came out. I actually have to post on uh, the BGG forum because I'm like, what, what, what is, why is, why is defense and armor and shielding separate? And so I, I got a better explanation of it, so I understand why, and I'll explain that, but it was just weird. It was weird. <laughs> never agreed to be your friend. You got no choice, Robert. You got no choice. I'm your friend for life. Uh, designed by Martin Knight. Um, there's some art in there, but I guess BGG doesn't know who did it. And uh, he self-published it as a web publish, as a PDF on Drive-Thru RPG. Or you can just go on BGG and get, get it as well. So this is not a hard game to find, not an expensive game to get. But you will, um, you, you, you will need to get it bound and printed. Yes, I am back with my tabs. And, but not because the rules are bad. It's just, it's just so much. It's so much. And we'll get into it and see how it goes. I got a shortcut thing. I got bling. We're going to make it work. Okay, so let's get down to the table. I'm fumbling and bumbling because I'm super nervous. I don't want to screw this up, but we're going to get it right. We're going to have fun. Let's do it. Okay. Welcome to D100 Dungeon. All right, cool. That's the game. Bye, everybody. No, um, so this is the play mat. And let me explain kind of what you're looking at this. You're like, what the hell is all this crap, right? These are different areas of things. And usually when you play the game, you get this thing, which is your adventure sheet. This adventure sheet is three pages long. There is this sheet. There is your backpack and quest tracker. And there is you tracking the boss kills and what you get from it because you get rewards with every sing with after you hit a specific level of killing a set of bosses. So you're upgrading yourself. This game has massive amounts of replayability because there are 100 quests to do in it. D100, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> tabs, tabs, they stress me, they me not stress. <laughs> I promise you, I promise you that the tabs are not bad. That's just for me. That's not because the rule book's bad at all. It's actually a pretty decent rule book. But I have the PDFs up, so I, I won't be flipping to this book. I'll be using the PDFs on screen so you can read along with me so you can get some sense of things. So if you've ever played D&D &D, or any game akin to D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons, this game is, you just walk right into it. You walk right into the game because it's huge. <laughs> this is an RPG character sheet. You are correct. You are correct, Kate. This is an RPG character sheet. But the thing about it is that it's evolved a lot. If you go to any other playthrough, any other playthrough from people other than um, Martin that did these playthroughs, every character sheet is different because every version has evolved the character sheet. Um, a lot of things stay consistent, but like this AS, this AS to, uh, lot column that's here, not a thing, just, 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 not, a, just not a thing. <laughs> it's not there, uh, but the rest of it is, and you have skills, I mean, like I say, if you've ever played D&D, &D, <laughs> yeah, if you've ever played D&D, &D, you've got your skills, right? Where you, where you get bonuses to, to, um, to these abilities like agility. You have to dodge a trap, um, lucky, which I'll probably need. And then you have a spell book to where you can cast spells, you have health, and then your time tracker. So let me break down this and, where, and how that integrates with this. So here you, you have things that you have to keep track of because when your candle goes out, when your torch goes out in the dungeon, Oh my god, it becomes, it, it becomes ridiculously hard. So you need to keep track of oil. You need to keep track of food because you have to eat while you're in the dungeon. And you need to keep track of lot picks in this weird little section that's over here. I've replaced that with this mat that has lock picks, food, <laughs> and oil. So I will be tracking that here. You also need to keep track of how many keys that you have or how many levers that need to be marked based on what the dungeon tells you to do. So those things you need to track as well on the sheet. But I will be keeping track of them here with keys and levers. 
So, and also, if you get poisoned, or if you get disease, bad things happen, and you need to keep track of how much because they stack. So you need to keep track of how much, and I'll be keeping track of them here with poison and disease. So you see this section here replaces these four and this. Okay? Simple enough. Easy, easy peasy. This is my health, which is tracked here. <laughs> So health points, HP, primary and adjusted. So those are gonna be tracked here on this map. <laughs> yeah, exactly, but this is why I blinged it out because I was like, if I'm doing this the whole time and shifting this and doing this, you're gonna be like, oh my God, this is too much bookkeeping. This is bookkeeping the board game. Um, so if you have monsters that you have to take care of in terms of their health, I still need to keep track of them on this because this is gonna help me uh, gain rewards. If I, if I beat them, I keep track on them here. However, while I'm fighting them, I keep track of them here. If it's more than one monster, you see it says one, two, three, four, five, six, and then M1, M2, M3. So if it's a boss, you just kind of do their health. You know, let's say the boss has 50 health, then you do there and then you start counting down. However, in the dungeon, you could face more than one monster. So if you do, then monster one will have that much health, monster two will have that much health, and monster three can have like that much health. And you could track the health of each monster that you fight. So that's to just give you a sense of I'll be tracking monster health here instead of on this, this one page here where I have to say, oh look, this is the health of I'm fighting three rats, so it's three, two, two. Instead, it's more I could track them here and make it easy. <laughs> the dice will even me out, Robert. The dice will even me out. Um, then there's uh, encounter modifiers. So the game is made up of various 100 quests for you to play, right? Each quest kind of ramps itself up. You can go in order. You can say, okay, I'm starting from one, and I'm going to go all the way to 99. Let's say I'm going to play through all these quests. As you do that, or each different quest modifies the encounters that you fight, because they don't want you at level one fighting a dragon if you roll really high. So instead, they'll say, okay, well, the encounter modifier for, the, um, for this quest is minus 40. So whatever you roll, you subtract 40 from it, and that's the monster that you're going to fight. Does that make sense? So, and you're going to see me do this in the playthrough. So talking about it, you'll probably be like, huh? But once I get into the playthrough, you'll actually see me use this. So that's how we're going to keep track of it. And you usually keep track of that. Where was the modifier? I just saw it. I haven't, I've been using this, so... Oh, here it is. This right here is where you keep track of it. You see that all, all the way in the corner? And I'm like, I'm not going to look at that. That doesn't make sense to me. This makes sense to me, so I'm going to use that. Finally, on this map, the last thing that we're keeping track of is the most important thing, is the time track. As you... You can take all the time you want in the dungeon, unless the quest says that you have X amount of time to do it. But as you walk through the dungeon, there's different things that happen. When you first start, you gotta burn oil. That's what this symbol's for. When you get to this section in the time track, you gotta, find, you gotta roll the die, and if you roll, you have to roll a D10. And if you roll a four or lower, you face a monster. Oil, five or lower, you face a monster oil, six or lower, you face a monster, and then you gotta eat. And that's when you consume food, and then you just keep going around and around and around and around and around. Uh, yep, roll d10 equal to or less for encounter. Yep. Oh, I have to roll less, equal to or less for the encounter. So that's why this keeps track of like the middling stuff that's on this adventure sheet. Okay, so clear as mud. But it will all make sense once we start playing. I just want to describe what you see here. This is the bling out, right? These are geographic areas. So if I find some special area, a waterfall, a fountain with a fairy in it that I can capture in a bottle, uh, a talking Deku tree that I should light on fire because there's a big spider inside of it. If these, that's what's in these, and the game will tell us what to, like, which one to pick to use. So that's the stack. Kanji made me buy it. You're going to cost me a fortune. <laughs> hey, Brian, what's going on? <laughs> so that's what these are. 
And you'll see the artwork, like, for instance, if you found, let me see if I can get this to show. If you found a specific staircase that goes down, then it'll tell you, hey, you rolled an 88, use the staircase. That's, that's what this stuff is. And it's varying things in there, right? There's forests, there's all these different things, but those are geographic locations that rolling dice work with. This, these are my dungeon tiles. So let's go to, let's go to the, uh, all right, so D100 dungeon, and I'm gonna go here to show you. Uh, let's see. I wanna find the right sheet. This is all you really need to play the game. Let me slide this over, because I wanna make sure I'm seeing all of you. So this is all you need to play the game, right? A grid sheet. If you don't wanna bling out, just buy the book, print the last six pages. You're ready to go. But this is what you need is a grid sheet, and that's what you're gonna draw on. So there's one with an entrance, one without an entrance, and then a really cool image of a dragon. Um, the, the part that I really care about for you to see, here is the kind of adventure sheet like, that I'm showing you. This is a breakdown of the abilities, the keywords, right? Like I said, it's done really well. A handy sheet for you to go through, and we'll get to all that. And then the ridiculous amounts of stuff. What I want to get to is, where are you, sir? Remember when I was talking about the geographic tiles? That's all this. A hundred. There's a hundred geographic tiles. But I want to get to this. Nope. Where, where are you? Mapping? Yeah, here it is. Here it is, mapping. There's so many tables in this game, it's ridiculous. But I understand why. So this is how you walk through the dungeon. You see these different ones? So you'll roll a D100, right? So you'll say, okay, I'm going to simulate this. I'm going to roll this. I got a three. Oh, boy, we're starting off great. So I got a three, zero, zero, and a three. Then I would come to this, and I'll say, okay, three is a yellow tile that's here. And I would draw the shape. It's a yellow, so there's nothing in it, so I can search it. But I'll draw the shape and then deal with whatever I have to deal with. That's how you move through the dungeon. Rolling a D100, drawing that thing, and doing it. I am not an artist. Yeah, I am not an artist. Yeah, right, Robert, drawing it, it was way more difficult. I am not an artist. And because I'm not an artist, all those tiles are represented here. See? <laughs> so as we draw and walk through the dungeon, I will be drawing these. Uh, I'm going to shuffle this deck as best as I can, but I'll be drawing these and dealing with them. And if you notice, they all have different colors. There's red. There's yellow, there's blue, and I think there's a green one. Yep, there's green. Those tiles we'll get into when we're playing the game. Mean, the colors mean something. And so those, that's kind of what we're going to be going with as we play. Resolving as we walk through. And what we're going to do, uh, because I'm going to, is like we'll draw the top one, put it here, and you see that arrow? That arrow should always be pointing in the direction that we're going. So this is a red room, we'll face an encounter, and after we deal with it, we'll walk through the room, draw the next tile, and you see, like, you're like, okay, do you want, nope, I gotta put it here, because that's the way I'm going. Then I gotta put it here, because that's the way I'm going. And you just keep moving around and moving around and moving around. So you're building out the dungeon as you're walking around, and this bling is, I was like, I'm not drawing crap. I am going, this, this is what I need. Okay. Ah! Yes, yes, you're, you're witnessing this happening right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Okay. It's shuffled. It's done. It's done. Certain... Oh, that's upside down, isn't it? <laughs> Damn it. Certain parts of um, these dungeons have doors. So, and their doors are represented on this card. So if there's a door, I draw from, I like, I randomly draw from this and say what type of door it is. So in the book, there are doors, you roll on the D100 doors to see what type of door it is. I'm gonna draw here. If I face an encounter, I'm gonna pull from the encounter set. 
if I have a geographic area, I'm going to put from the geographic area set. If we get money, I'm going to pull from the money set. So I blinged it out so that I don't have to... Um, I, I won't be rolling as much dice as a typical person would who doesn't have the bling out, but I still will be rolling dice. If I face an enemy, I have the card to label their stats instead of having to read on that sheet what it is. Uh, hey all, been thinking about buying this since watching Daniel on the Dungeon Dive play it and talking about it. Looking forward to your thoughts on it. Thanks, Kanji. Hey, Elaine, what's going on? Pull up a chair. What happens when you get a, to a dead end like in that example? If your first room area is a dead end, um, if like, let's say the first example, I don't want to look at this because I just want to pull what's there. But let's say if your first room's a dead end, the game says that you can make a secret passage to pass through and keep going. So it, it's saying like, it doesn't want a bad draw of a specific number to slow you down. You find a secret door that lets you keep going through the dungeon until you find what you need. So that, that's kind of the thing of it. It's, there are secret doors, and if you hit a dead end and you've locked yourself down, you've, you've found a secret door, so you, draw no, so, you, so you roll again and draw, to the, draw whichever direction the secret door is and keep moving. So if that makes sense. And I'll probably run into a dead end at some point, not finding what I need, and I'll show you the example of that working. The game also comes with a little meeple, but you could bling that out even further by getting a mini and putting that mini on it as it walks through because it's just you. Okay, let's get to... So I've introduced you to all this stuff because these are the enemy cards. I have them flip face up because I'm actually going to roll to see what enemies I get, and then I will pull those cards and show you what those are. But these are almost all the enemies. Almost all the enemies. Um, if I was using spells, I have even the spell cards that I blinged out, but when I make a wizard, I'm going to do that. But instead today, I'm going to make a cleric and we'll see how that, we'll see how building the cleric works because this is the cool thing about the game that I really enjoyed was you start off with a base class and from leveling up and doing other things, you level up into what you want to become. And you could, you can like twist it up however you want. It doesn't have to be, um, it, it's not like I'm starting with a cleric. I have to start with a base class and build to a cleric, all right? Grab the mini from role player adventures. Yes, I should have done that, Kate. I should have done that. Use that mini from role player adventures. You're so right, but it'll be good. It'll be good. All right, first things first, let's kick this, let, let's kick this thing. Let's do the thing. So before we get down to the fun, what we need to do is create our adventurer. And I've got the tabs here that, that they've done to kind of step through things properly because we've got a lot to talk about. If you want to learn how to play this game, I got to show you how to play it before I just dive in. I can't just say, okay, well, I'm just going to, all right, let's start playing. I'm going to confuse you. You're going to be like, what the hell are you doing? Why do you have 800 subs? You suck. So I don't want you to say that about me. It would make me cry. So we're going to walk through this and do this setup. All right. So we're going to create an adventure. Now, when we're creating a venture, there's, there's, there's a couple things we got to do, and we're going to follow them in order. Um, if you can't see this clearly enough, let me know, and I'll zoom in even further on it. But creating an adventure, there are three characteristics used in the game, strength, dex, and intelligence. When players create an adventure for the first time, they assign any one characteristics the hell are you doing? <laughs> uh, they're, when a player creates an adventure for the first time, they assign any one character, any one of them with 50, the next with 40, and the next with 30. So there are three base stats. Strength, dex, and intelligence. You play d d you know these things. They just didn't add wisdom or constitution. Um, so... I need to assign those stats based on the class that I'm building. If I want to build a spellcaster, I give intelligence 50. If I want to build a rogue base, I give dex 50. And if I want to build a warrior base, I give strength 50. Does that make sense? So what we're going to start off with is eels that we have on our sheet, and that's this area here. Well, I'm building a cleric. A cleric is an off tank. 
uh, and what that means for people who don't play D and D is they they it's like the Sun Keeper from our from our Gloom uh Killforth uh not Gloomy Killforth sorry Gloomhaven Gloomhaven I'm looking at Gloomy Killforth that's why uh Gloomhaven playthrough on uh, Gloomhaven Digital with Rob right it's the Sun Keeper it's classes that can take a hit can deal out a hit but they're not damage sponges they can just take they they can help offset damage so they're off tank and they can do something else they're multi class right so I'm not just a sword and board. I'm not just this, this guy with a battle axe that grunts and smacks stuff in the face. I can cast spells as a cleric. I can cast healing spells, or I, can, or I can smite, or do things like that, or pass judgment. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. So, um, that's what my cleric's building. But, it, since, since my cleric is an off-tank, I have to give strength first. So, I'm going to give 50 to strength. Right? My cler clerics are not very dexy, right? They don't move fast because they, they, wear, they usually wear armor. And so, therefore, they're not quick and they clunk around. Um, so they don't have a lot of dexterity. But they need to be able to cast spells so they have a lot of intelligence. So intelligence will get my 40. And dex will get my 30. So that's my beginning class. Okay? All right. He's still with me. I haven't, drove, I haven't driven you off. So that is the first thing I'm doing. Ah. The next is determine the hero path. What path will our hero embark on as they go? Fighter mage priest? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. A cleric is a fighter mage priest. <laughs> so um, every, every adventurer has a path they have chosen to fall and dedicate their life towards learning. By choosing a path, they will benefit from greater understanding and accelerate their learning in this direction. There are three hero paths to start off with. This is to start, so they don't want to make it complex. The warrior path, the rogue path, and the sorcerer path. I'm a, I'm a holy warrior, so you know I'm going to pick the warrior path. So if you don't know what you want to do, if you completely want to randomize it, you can either roll on the H table, or the hero path table, and we're going to go there so you can see what I get, or choose a path that you want, then write it in the box. I'm going warrior, but let's go to the let's go to the H table, which is this here, right? So as a warrior path, if I if I didn't know what I wanted to do, I'd roll the d6. I'm gonna have to look for that. I'm gonna roll a d6 and then choose what it is. However, because we're going the warrior path, this is kind of what these are the added skills that we get. So I am going to get, I'm picking the warrior path and start thinking up names. I'm not going to do Stabby McStabface. <laughs> I'm just going to do what this is. So I get plus 10 to strength. So my strength goes from 50 to 60. Ooh. I'm going to change something up a little bit. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yes, yes, I am. I'm going to give, I'm going to give intelligence to 50. I'm going to be casting spells. I'm going to give intelligence to 50 and strength to 40. And then because I'm taking the warrior path, my strength gets a plus 10, so it's adjusted to 50. My dex gets a minus 5 because I suck at that, so that's going to go to 25. Ooh. And my intelligence takes a hit and it goes to 45. You'll see why I did that in a second. Healy McKeel face. <laughs> uh, my skill bonus that I'm going to get um, down on the bottom here, these are my skills. I'm going to get a plus five to bravery and a plus five to escape. So I'm just going to do a plus five to bravery and a plus five to escape. So that means that whenever I roll for, if I have to make a bravery check, I'm going to roll the dice and add plus five to it. If I make an escape check, I'm going to roll the dice and add a plus five to it. Okay. All right. So we've chosen our, hero, our characteristics. We've chosen our hero path. Now we got to cho choose our race. I got to be a race thing. Anyway, uh, there, are, there are three races in this game. There are dwarves, elves, and humans. So they dominate the land. Our adventure will begin uh, to choose one of these. So we roll on the R table if we're unsure. So we go to the race table. Race gives us some stuff. So I'm going to go human because that's what I want so we're going to be a human 
right? There's a reason why I'm doing this. I swear, I'll explain it all. So if you don't know what you want to do or you want to ram do it, you roll a d6 and you pick what's on here. But we're going to pick human dwarf. Never trust a dwarf. So, or is that never trust an elf? <laughs> so we're going to go human as our race. We're a human holy warrior. Yeah, I need the... And with that, we get plus five to plus five to intelligence, putting us back at fifty. Ooh, this really works out. And we get minus five of Dex. We are a true cleric. <laughs> I'm gonna fail so many uh, dexterity checks. You have no idea. And then we get a plus five uh, to the aware skill. All right. Like I said, it seems that we're just doing setup. I got to walk you. Th I, I apologize. I got to walk you through this because when I start playing, you're going to wonder what the hell all this stuff means. So I'm explaining it, stepping it through. Gaspard Green Breeze. Gaspard? Sir Gaspard. Hmm. I'll think about it. All right. Finally, well, not finally, before the adventure, before starting the adventure, uh, exploring dungeon, in search of lost treasures. I just read that before the adventure started exploring dungeons in search of lost treasures, they gain a few extra skills other than those provided um, in their hero path or race. Now I can choose any two skills that, that didn't that I haven't powered up to give a plus five to. So it's a little bit extra. So now I can choose two skills to give plus five to. Um um, 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 I'm going to give a plus five to luck. <laughs> and I'm going to give a plus five to strong because I'm strong. So luck and strong will get it. Okay. So, so far, as you've seen me build out, my adjusted, I'm 50 strength, 20 dex, 50 int. And I'm a, a, war a human warrior that's going to be a cleric. And I get a plus five and some skills that are here. Gerard. Ooh, I like Gerard. Gerard's good. We're going to go with Gerard. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Gerard. Sir Gerard. Well, no. Sirs aren't cleric. So we'll call him uh, Gerard. And you strong. <laughs> I'm strong. Uh... I'll say Gerard Gaspard. So we are in Gerard Gaspard. Okay. Here's the reason why I, I switched those things around. Well, first we gotta finish building up and then we'll do the finishing touches and I'll show you why. Next, we gotta get some equipment. We gotta get some equipment. And to do that, it says the adventurers begin the game with some basic equipment they have gathered together. Roll once on the weapons table for table W and roll three times on the armor table for starting equipment. Uh, if you, so let's, let's do that for a second. And it also says, if you happen to roll a piece of armor that is assigned to a location you've already equipped the item to, you may keep the armor rolled or roll again to get something different, okay? So let's go to the weapons table. There are so, so many weapons you can get. And we're gonna roll get stuff. So the weapons table that you want to see me roll on. The weapons table. Let's not roll a three. I'm, I'm going for like a hundred. Here we go with a hundred. Ready? 33. We got 33. What do we get for 33? We have a rapier. A cleric with a rapier. Cool. So it's a one-handed weapon, as you can see. So let's go from left to right. We roll 33. It's a one-handed weapon because there's just one hand of a hand, right? So one-handed weapon. It's the type of weapon is um, uh, melee. It's not range. The R is range. I don't know what the H means, but it's melee. And it's a rapier, so we'll put it in our main... Oh, main hand. Main hand. Main hand. Uh, rapier. R-A-P-I-E-R. Um, it does plus zero damage because whatever we roll, we're not going to add anything to it. It costs 75 gold pieces if we sell it. So if we're like, we're selling this, then we'll get 75 gold pieces for it. 
Or if we want to buy it, it'll cost 75. If it breaks! Oh yes, your weapons can break in this game. If it breaks, it's going to cost 115 gold... Uh, sorry. Damn it. It's going to cost 15 gold to fix. 15 GP. And this game's cruel. This game's cruel because it's like... You've, you're, you've been adventuring a while, and I gotta look for my, my diet, my D6. Yeah, my D6. You've been adventuring for a while, and your weapon has taken some damage. Because this game is cruel. So, let me just use this. Oh, wait, did I find it? Did I find it? I'm looking for my specific one to match set, but we'll just let this happen, and my eye will twitch. So, what you have, so your weapon's taken some wear. You have to determine how much wear your weapon took. So you're going to roll a d6 to see how much wear your weapon took. I'm going to roll a 6. I know it. A 3. All right. So what you do is you come to the sheet. And you see right here, I rolled a 3, so it has two points of um, damage on it to start. I asked about this foolishness. So you shade in two pips. To say, hey, my new weapon that I got, <laughs> my weapon that I've had with me my whole life is a little bit worn. So that's how much it has. If I get four, once I get four more, the weapon breaks. And I got to go back to town to fix it. Uh, which means I have to fail my quest, blah, blah, blah. But we'll find other weapons in the dungeon and we'll work this thing out. Then we get three rolls on the armor table. So we're going to... Hop over to the armor table, and let's see what we get. Three rolls. First roll. 59. 59. Yes. Hey, Nova Girl. Yeah, I'm playing with the tiles. I'm playing with the tiles. Uh, so 59, I've got... Ooh, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. So I've got um, a head item that is studded leather helmet. You just fill it out on the sheet. Um, the AS value, I'm going to explain that to y'all because someone had to break it down for me. So it's one, but I will explain it. Uh, they, I, it's 104 gold to buy if I'm looking for a new one. And it's 21 gold to fix should it get busted up. Let's see its durability. Roll a one. A two is fine because that's only one point. A one and a two is just one. I'll take it. That was the first roll. Second roll, like we're building this stuff out. We're building out our build up. A 15. That's not happy. So a 15. Ooh, it's a shield. I'll take that. I'll take a shield. A buckler shield. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Offhand. I'm basically walking around with a toothpick and toilet paper to protect myself. Uh, its shield value is zero. Why? Why wouldn't they make it one? Anyway, 79 gold to buy and 16 gold to fix. 16 gold to fix. And how much does my piece of toilet paper have in terms of <laughs> uh, three, which is just two points. So my piece of toilet paper has two points of degrade on it. And our final roll, trust me, it's gonna get good, I swear. It's 13. That's just stupid. That's the same thing. I don't want that. 43. <laughs> so let's see what 43 is. Uh, no, we're going to walk through because I want to show everybody how to do, how to play the game. But we're going to go through them. I didn't fast. I could fast track, but I want to explain how it works. So it shouldn't be too, too bad. Maybe I might. You know what, Nova Girl? Maybe I just might. I, I just might. Uh, we got stud leather belt. So that's a waste item. Studded. I wasn't thinking about doing it only because I was like, I want people to kind of see how this game stacks up in terms of um, build up. Gold. 
and 19 gold. All right. So we did our three rolls. We got some stuff, some starting equipment. But I mean, I, I don't mind playing through a first one. All right. So finally, we're going to do the finishing touches. The finishing touches are these things. I'm going to start off with 20 health. I have one rep because I'm only 16. I don't have a rep yet. Uh, three fate. Fate is basically, um, if you play Gloomy Killforth, it's the same thing. It's where you can spend fate to re-roll if you fail a roll. And you only have three for the entire uh, quest. Um, th and three life. So life is if you die, you come back three times for the quest. Uh, well, you come back three times overall. Overall. So if you're in another quest and you die your last time, you're dead. Start over. So you only have three lives. You've only got three lives to live. Um, to the adventure sheet and give your adventure a name. You're now ready to begin. Cool. I got lucky in my training dungeon to roll a treasure worth a lot of gold, bought a pet immediately. <laughs> yeah, you only have three, you only have three fate and you only have, it's not good for me for sure, Mike, but you only have three lives total. So if at any time after your third life is up and you die, your character, just, just sprinkle up the adventure sheet and throw it in the trash. You're dead. You're dead. Start over. Okay, so here's the reason why I, I switched strength and intelligence and made them both and got them both to be 50. When you hit 50, you get these wonderful abilities. Ooh ha, ooh ha 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 ha. One is called Mighty Blow. During combat, damage rolls of six roll, roll again and add to the roll. So basically, it's the exploding die. So having a strength of 50 or greater gives you the exploding die ability to where. When I, roll a D, uh, when I roll a d6 for damage, if I roll a d6, it, ex, it explodes or explodes, right? right? And, and as I keep rolling sixes, I keep stacking damage. That's what Mighty Blow is. So I got Mighty Blow. And because now my intelligence is 50, I can now cast spells from the spell book. So I am a spellcaster. Kind of crazy, right? That my cleric can cast spells and hit stuff really hard. But that's the reason why I built it that way. See, that's the cool thing about, about even building a character. You start off with these three base stats that says you're either a warrior, a rogue, or a caster, right? And from there, you can tweak it to become whatever you want. You can actually make a dragoon in this game if you want to, as, as you level up and build things out and find all these different weapons. You can build any class you want. You can build a, necro a, a warlock, a necromancer. You can build so many stuff. But it starts off with these base sets. Right now, I've already started building my cleric. I've got spell casting and I've got mighty blow. I've never done spell casting. I've usually just stuck to sword and board. But boop, that's what this is for. Hey, look, mighty blow. Um, during combat, when a natural six is rolled and the adventurer's damage die, the die is rolled again and the results are added together. If another natural six is rolled. The dies rolled again, adding the results so until you stop rolling sixes. This is called an exploding six or an exploding die. So we've unlocked the exploding die. We don't have perfect aim because our dex is trash. Um, but the other books give more classes. Than oh, that's cool. Yeah, I haven't played the I haven't played the other books in Overgirl, but that's very cool. Plus, we've unlocked Spellcaster. Like I said, I've never played this. I wanted to do it on stream because it's new, but I played the, the warrior class to see what it was like. Cultus Kate can be created. <laughs> so Spellcaster. Once the Spellcaster uh, spell ability becomes active, the adventurer may use spells they have collected in the spell book with an int level equal to or less than their current intelligence characteristics. See the spell book section of the adventure sheet. For instance, an adventurer with an int of 55 can use all spells listed in the spellbook with an int level range of 50 plus the first five. Whilst an adventurer with an int 67 can use all the spells uh, they have in the spellbook, including an up to 60 plus intelligence level. If that adventurer loses int in such a way that a spell falls outside the parameter, you lose. The spell's not lost, but you can't use it anymore. So it's not it's a gone spell, it's just there. So they even give an example. This is the reason why I said the, the, the rule book is pretty decent in explaining things. 
An adventurer with a name of 67 has filled the spellbook with six spells, but suffers a curse and loses 12 int. Uh, their int, I'm not going to say his, their int is now 55. So the sixth spell in their book is no longer available to them and cannot be used. Later, the character slips on a slips slips on a ring of wisdom in plus ten, making their int now sixty five, and the sixth spell now becomes available. Pretty straightforward. Pretty straight. Hey, Stephen, what's going? on? Pull up a chair. Uh, each time the event, the adventurer casts a spell, they must pay its cost, either losing HP or strength, and then perform the spell test. So. If you're going to cast a spell, and we'll come back to this, so if you're going to cast a spell, you got to test against the spell. If you succeed, you cast it. If you fail, uh, 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 uh. all right. <laughs> so if you find uh, scrolls, if you find scrolls, scrolls aren't scrolls don't go to the spell book, but spells do. Just keep that in mind. And so you have to do that stuff to run it. And then they talk about tests, which we'll get into, trap chests, which we'll get into. And there's the automatic failure, automatic success. All right. So this is something to keep in mind with automatic failure, automatic success. If you roll a one, it's a critical success. If you roll a hundred, it's a crit fail. So you're always, always in this game trying to roll low. Now, a lot of people would be like, hey, Kanji, this is your game. You know, you always roll low dice and everything. I say the name <laughs> only because when, um, when I have to roll low, I roll high. And when I have to roll high, I roll low. That's just my lot. Um, there's experience that you can get. And as you get experience, you level up skills. So that's how you become get stronger and stronger as you go through, which could unlock special abilities. Um, that stuff is crazy. And then there's tests that you go through. Blah, 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 blah. We'll get into, I say blah, 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 only because we'll get into all this as we go through. But this is kind of what your character sheet ends up shaping out to be. <laughs> I was thinking of you about to set up on Mars while I watch. Watch him roll high. I know, I know. Um, we also get, which in the setup, that's so weird. Why didn't I see that? I didn't write it down on my spell sheet. Uh, here it is. So we add 20 oil, 10, 10 picks, and three lesser healing potions that restores four health GP that we put to our belt or, or, um, or our backpack. So your character has a belt slot, which is here. One, two, three, four, five, that you put stuff on. Here is the reason why I'm only putting one potion in, on my belt and one on my backpack. If you use it on your backpack, you got to take a turn to get it out of your backpack to then use it. But if it's on your belt, you can use it right away, right? You just reach it, pop it off, drink it, and you're good. However, if you get hit, if, if you get hit or you draw or something that you, or once you roll in an encounter monster hits you, he can actually break items on your belt. So if you have three potions on your belt and they say uh, roll for belt damage and I roll a five or six, whatever is in this slot is broken and lost. So yes, that is... So I got a lesser healing heal potion here. So I'm putting one on the one slot. <laughs> and then in my backpack, I will then say I have um, uh, two lesser healing potions. Oh, sorry, it's items, it's items, it's items. Ah, that is equipment. Items. Two plus heal potion. So I will carry one on my person and one on my person and two in the bag. So if that one breaks, I have two more. But getting slapped around and losing them all. Uh, one thing I always forget is the under 10 skill level. It's the, it's the, um, it's the under 10. And we can look at that. This is what Nova Girl's talking about. I know y'all want to see me play, but once we get through setup, it'll go a lot faster, I swear. So what she's saying is when a natural roll is made during a test, natural roll means no mods, uh, including when rolling to hit a hit in combat that is equal to or less than 10. And this is what Nova Girl's talking about. The, the players shade in a, any single pip of the experience track of the characteristic that's involved in the test. Hey, look, here's an example to help you understand what the hell that means. 
So Julius is, is attempting to avoid a pendulum trap. She rolls an eight on her die and can either shade in one pip on her dex experience because it's a dex test or two pips on any of the skills shown for the test. So she has to do a pendulum trap. If she, she can add in her traps, aware, and lucky um, skills to the test, right, from her rolls. So she rolls an eight naturally on the dex test, and the test is dex minus 10. So therefore, my dex is 20 minus 10, which means I need to roll a 10 or lower to succeed on a, a 10 or lower, right? Um, I roll this. I roll my die. And oh, no, sorry, sorry, a 10 or higher, 10 or higher, 10 or higher. Um, I roll, uh, I roll my die and I get higher than my value, right? I, I'm so it's dex minus 10, which is 10. I roll my die, I get an eight. Uh oh, I'm gonna fail this test. I'm gonna add in my trap score, which is a plus five to make it 15, and then I pass. But because I rolled less than eight, I'm so sorry I confused y'all just now, because I rolled less than eight. Uh, because I rolled a natural 8, which is less than 10, I can upgrade a skill. And this will all make sense once we play. I have to roll higher than that in a trap test. So using the same test as before, Judas is attempting to avoid a pendulum. She is a human rogue and has experience, uh, and has experience shaded for decks and for skill traps and locks and aware. She rolls a 4 on her die and can either shade in two pips of her dex experience because... Um, Oh, because she crit, because she she got to the star, or two pips in her luck experience because the star is not shaded, two pips in either the trap experience or four because when one is shaded she can do that. And it sounds super confusing, but pro I promise you it's gonna make sense. All right, we gotta get to the dungeon. You guys have listened to me talk for almost an hour. Okay, so we're gonna get into the dungeon. We're gonna do some upgrades. Our character is ready to fly. Ready to go. All right. So I need to get out my handy dandy reference sheet that will tell us how to play through for this bed. And you can print it out if you need it. This is the handy reference sheet and the monster ability. So on a turn, uh, any time during a turn except in combat, the adventurer may equip or unequip items to and from equipment slots in the backpack. However, once a result from a uh, table requires a belt check or, item, or targets an item, it is not permitted to be adjusted for so let's begin going through the dungeon. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to move the time track. Because it landed on the oil space, I have to use one oil, right? Then choose an exit. Uh, choose an exit to move through, rotate the dungeon sheet. So basically, we're going to grab the first card and determine where we're starting off. It's a blue area. And we're going to start right there at the center. Our meeple is here. Uh, blue areas are, I always need my reference, I always need my reference. Sorry if I'm making this crazy, I just got to make sure it's right. Blue areas are objective areas. So we need to determine our quest, what we're doing, first off, before I even jump into this damn dungeon. Yeah, I have the combat sheet. Uh, we need to determine our quest, what we're doing. So we'll go to the quest sheets. And usually what you'll do, like I said, here are all the quests in the game. So um, you're going to roll a D100, and based on what you roll, you get to select which quest you're going to go on, or you can just pick whichever quest you're going to go do. When you're starting off the game for the first time, they have these dungeon trainers, one through four, that kind of walks you through building it out. And I think... Um, yeah, and I think that you have to... Uh, what they want you to do is they're saying, if this is your first time doing it, Start with one and walk your way down through a campaign to walk through all these different quests all the way to the end, right? There's a dragon down here that you got to fight and crazy, crazy stuff. So I think we're going to start off with the primer. I was going to say like I was going to skip it and go into trip through the dungeon. Um, but I want to I want y'all to see how this stuff works. And we're, I'm going to do all these and we're going to see how it goes. So the dungeon trainer one says that our encounter modifier is 40. Right? So we saw on our sheet that our encounter mod is 40. <laughs> it's not going to be too long. I'm probably not. I'm going to go as far as I can. If we succeed in this quest, we're going to get 50 gold. 
if we fail, we lose half of the gold that, that we get. We lose half of it just gone if we fail. Our job is to enter the dungeon and loot three parts from the monsters there. So our objective, uh, depending on luck, I think, we, well, we'll be okay, right? You're making me guess. Uh, anyone through choice they watch the stream or cleaning the house? <laughs> Tough choice, huh? Watch the stream or clean the house? Watch the stream. Oh, they're fetch quests. Okay. All right, let's go for a trip through the dungeon. Why the hell not? So we'll do this one. We'll do trip through the dungeon. So let's change our encounter mod to 20, and we'll just fight whoever we fight. So we'll change our encounter mod to 20. First one that's here. If we win, we get 150 gold. If we lose, we lose half our gold. We need to enter the dungeon, though first part of the objective, solid, and explore until we find two yellow, two green, two red, and two blue areas have been added to the dungeon sheet. So that's all we need to find are those areas. We've already found one blue from going on, but that's our quest, right? And you could write that down on your questing sheet. So this one here says, quest log. What, how many quests have you completed? How many have you failed? What's your current quest? All right, here's the quest tracker going through all the different quests that you can go through in this game. So that's your replayability for people who said, what's the replayability on this game? And our current quest is to uh, trip through the dungeon and our details is to find two yellow, two green, two red, two, two blue. Two yellow. Two green, two red, two blue. So this one should go a little bit faster. All right, so we just have to find those tiles and then we're done. So simple enough. So we have to explore those tiles. So we've entered the dungeon. That's our quest. We've entered the dungeon. Because somebody's probably yelling at me, you can't start without picking your quest. So we entered the dungeon through here. It's a blue one. And as I was saying about blue areas that I just closed, Blue areas, so um, blue, blue areas are objectives, are objective room. Blue areas may be important areas in a dungeon that are specific to completing the current quest, and the player should check the quest to see if they are relevant. If they are not, then the area is re regarded as empty. It's an empty room, but still retains its color for the purpose of searching. So it's an empty room that we are going to search. So searching room. Sorry. I thought I had my quick notes. Uh, here we go. So when we want to search a room, it said the adventurer may search each area per game once and hunt for anything of interest. The players roll D100 and check the find table, uh, which a lot and follow its instructions. Certain areas may provide a modifier to the roll. When they are searched and the player applies the modifier to the roll. So a blue room's modifier is a plus 20 to a fine check. So I'm going to roll this. <laughs> this is only live now. So I'm going to roll whatever I roll here. I add plus 20 to it and I look at the fine table. I got a 52 and I'm going to add 20 to it, making it a 72. So we got a 72. We're going to the fine table. Oop. And the 72 is this. So we spend zero time, thank God. We, and you lose time searching stuff. So we spend zero time, no time searching this room. Uh, shifting through some debris, a piece of armor is revealed. Roll on the armor table and add plus 15 to your roll. I ain't mad at that. I am not mad at that. All right. Roll on the armor table. And add plus 15. I rolled a 27. <laughs> These rolls are going to kill me. So um, that's what? 41, is it? Plus 15? Is it 41? 42. 42. 42. 42. All right. So 42, we found some legs. We found some legs. So we're going to 
we're gonna quickly put on we're you know we we had it we were just down our skivvies and now we found some legs so we got some studded leather whatever that word is because someone in chat will tell me how to pronounce it properly it's got an a1 on it and it's 89 gold to sell and 18 gold to fix And what's that wear on that shit on those? <laughs> what's that wear on them rolls? It's a one, so it's only it's that guy just died. He just died when it came in. Oh, I forgot to roll on the other one. I forgot to roll on the belt. The belt has two points on. I forgot to roll on the belt. My bad, good people. My bad. All right, so we've got we we got some pants. We're no longer naked. That's a that's an image you wanted. So the room has been searched and we're done. So to mark the room being searched, I'm gonna put that on it. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh so there's our map. Consult the bench otherwise roll on the end table and add. Okay, so now we are we searched. And that's a turn. That's a turn, so boop, next time. Where are we going to next? Hey, look, we're fighting a boss. And here is that perfect example that Pontus was asking about. Hey, what happens when the room's in here? So we're moving into this room, and we gotta fight a boss. We gotta fight an, an encounter. Not a boss, an encounter. So if we, so if we, let's see, choose an exit to move through, rotate the dungeon to get to where you're going. If the area's already mapped, blah, blah, blah. Um, so we have to do, we have to roll on a map table, but we've come into combat. So now it's time to fight, and we gotta roll who we're gonna fight. Well, we've got a minus 20 on our mod, and I was gonna use this because it just has the starting ones in it to just randomly draw, but let's roll and see what we're gonna deal with. So we're gonna go to the encounter table, and I'm not gonna show you that guy because he's scary, and we're gonna determine who we're gonna face. So we're going to subtract 20 from whatever this roll is. <laughs> 42 should be, it's the answer to everything, Brian. It's the answer to everything. So subtract 20 from this. So it is 22. Subtracting 20 makes it just a two. So it's two. Who are we facing? We're facing giant rats. I'm okay with that life. So we've got an encounter with some giant rats that we're going to be facing. Um, let us go ahead. Lucky for you, it's the first card on my sheet. <laughs> so giant rats have an AV or an attack value of 25. A defense of zero, so which means it's not going to block anything. Damage minus two. And there are three of them They have that has health three, two, and two. And if I kill it... I roll on the P2 table. And they have abilities called disease and pack. So that's what we're going to face. Disease says, um, when a monster scores a natural one on their damage die, they infect the adventure with disease and the player shades in one pip on the disease track. Ugh. What does that mean for us? Even if the monster does not deal any damage during the combat roll, you still take the disease. When, time, when the time track is refreshed, which means it makes a full revolution. Uh, I lost my place. When the time track is refreshed, the player must roll 1d10. If the result is equal to or less than the number of disease, the disease pip shaded, we suffer health HP equal to the number of shaded. So, for instance... The rat hits us with a nat 1, we get 1 point of disease. We roll a d10, I roll a 1, I'm going to take 1 point of damage. Let's say I'm still getting, I, you, disease doesn't go away until you clear it, until you find a way to clear it. So let's say I'm up to 7, it's stacking. And I make that revolution, and I roll and I roll a 3, I'm going to take 7 points of damage. So disease sucks. And it's not something that you suffer once and it goes away. It stays with you. It sucks. <laughs> it looks like a dead end! You also have the cards. Yep, I also have the cards. So, and they also have pack. What does pack mean? What's pack, man? 
Uh, Pack says, at the start of each combat round, each monster still alive beyond the first gets a plus five to their attack value. For instance, if an encounter has four monsters still alive, their, their attack value is 15, right? So first monster, 5, 10, 15. When they, when they attack, when an adventurer deals, uh, deals a pack damage, it's HP depleted in the order from left to right, and the surplus damage spills over. So it's not you attack one and dies. If I hit hard enough, I could kill multiple ones of them. Uh, and what happens at that point is the pack number drops. So there are three of them, which means their attack value is 25 plus 510. So 15. Oh, sorry, 10. God. So their uh, attack value is 35, basically. And when they roll, they have to roll um, a, 35, a 35 or lower to hit me. Okay. And they get to hit me in specific locations, just like KDM. Yay. So let's find out what these monsters are doing. To find out what these monsters... The monsters have a reaction table to say... This is... Think of this as the attack mod car the attack mod stuff of kdm uh, of uh, not kdm sorry gloomhaven where they're going to they're going to draw okay they're going to do a plus two damage they're going to run away they're going to heal they're going to do something right that's what this is so their reaction table that's all right so you will take disease damage every time the turn counter resets got it yep the so roll a three a three on here says the monster will just, they're not doing anything special. It's a plus zero mod, so they're just going to attack. Okay, dokie. Let's get into some combat. So we got to fight these guys. Um, let's talk about combat. So on combat, we, this sheet tells me everything to do. Roll, and I want to walk through this so you can see it. So roll 1d10 for the monster's reaction to determine the action forthcoming, then continue step two. So they're doing nothing, just attacking. The players determine their course of action, and this will greatly depend on the monster's reaction. The monster's reaction, blah, 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 blah. So we could block. We, could, we can try to run away if we want. We determine if we want to run away, we want to stand, we want to defend what we want to do. I'm fighting. To attack a, to attack a monster, the players roll 1d100 and must score equal to or below the player's adjusted strength value. So my strength value is, uh, is 50. So I need to roll 50 or less <laughs> to hit this creature. And just to keep in mind, attack happens simultaneously. So I'm going to roll for me, I'll roll for the monster. But just like in Explore, it, attacks happen simultaneously. Okay, so just for me, I need to roll a 50 or less. And I really, really wish my weapon did more than plus zero because that would have been fabulous. Here we go. Welcome. Oh, wait, is that a. No, that's a 90. That's a 90. Swing and a miss. <laughs> Swing and a miss. I told you if I have to roll low, I'm going to roll high. So, uh, da -da 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 -da. if the roll scores a hit, go to four. It did not. Um, so now the monster is going to attack me. The monster is going to roll a d6 for where it's going to hit me. Uh, let's see. roll both the monster damage die and the location and apply the damage. Okay, so the monster needs to hit me. So the monster needs to roll a d100 as well, and he and the monster needs to roll a 35 or less. Remember, I had to roll a 50 or less and I failed. The monster's gonna roll a 35 or less. <laughs> oh, sweet, 56. Swing and a miss. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so you're going to miss. So we both missed each other. You didn't see anything happen. That's the end of one round of combat. Next round of combat, we got to roll on its reaction because we're kind of squaring off against each other in the dungeon. We're like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to shift sideways. And I sidestepped him, kind of scared a little bit. But let's see what happens. What, what's reaction this monster is going to take now? A two. A uh, monster has less than half its health. Gains, a, gains attack value plus five. So if the monsters have half their health, which means they're down to, I've killed two creatures, they're going to bump up their, um, their attack value from 35 to 40. My turn to fight. Once again, 50 or less. Son of a god. Okay, so 58. 
58. Sweet. Yes. Their turn. 42, and they need a 35, so that's a miss. So this is what this round is going to be. Oh, God. Here we go. Both of us just can't seem to attack each other. Uh, they're going to do the same thing as last time. 50 or less. 20. Thank you. That's a 20 from me. I finally hit the stupid thing. So, um, let's see. To attack a monster, I roll um, with a hand weapon, which was the H. I use strength. And with, with a ranged weapon, like a bow, I have to use dex. So it was a hand weapon. If the character has two weapons equipped, I get to choose what I want. But roll both the damage die, 1d6, and the location die together and apply the damage mod to the damage die of the location roll. See the hit location. Uh, see the hit location table in the adventure. Oh, this is my mod. This is my mod. Then deduct the monster's defense value and see what happens. So I roll a d6 and a d10. So two and two, right back at you. So the D6 is um, the damage, so I'm doing two damage, and the D10 is the location, which is um, a two. Okay, so let's see hit location. Uh, what table is that on? Hit location table, which adds mod. And the sheet. So a two, on the hit location table for me is I hit him on the back. I hit him on the back for plus two mod, plus two damage mod. So I hit him on the back for plus two doing four damage. Oh, and the, the, the monster's health, three, two, and two. So I do plus four, so I do plus four damage. Well, I do four damage total. It is two for my damage roll, plus two as my damage mod to hit this creature. Uh, the monster checks against defense, so it's zero. And then we mark it down. So we go from, we go from uh, left to right. So one, two, three, four. Uh -huh. I busted his back. And now it has, um, now it has down to half health, right? It has, it has half health because the monster has less than half its HP, which it does now. It only has three health left of the three, six, seven, eight, nine. So its its attack value goes up by five. So now instead of it being um, being thirty five, it's forty. I believe. Right? It's mod because it's still, oh no, it has pack. I've killed one of the pack. So this is the front, so it's just 5. So now it's 30 plus 5, 35. So it's 35. Here we go. Their turn. A 21. They hit me too. I got close enough, and they hit me. So they're going to do the same thing to me. They're going to grab a d10, and they're going to see. If they roll a 1 on this die, I get disease. Like that. Just like that. Got a point of disease on me. Oh, God. Okay, where are they hitting me? They're hitting me in my offhand um, for one point of damage. Um, I have an offhand weapon, which is my buckler. And this is where this AS value comes in. So I had to get this explained to me. And I'm going to take a pause in terms of combat to explain for, for this to break down because I had to go here. And yeah, that's me being like, yes, that's me. So that's me being like, yeah, and this was my expression. What? So they, they explain it as this. There is a defense value, and then there's an AV value. Why they did this, I don't know. But anyway. Hey, Ryan, what's going on? There are several values you have to keep track of now, and they're applied when taking damage at different stages. Let's say a monster has a plus four damage and hits you in the arm. This one hit me in, in, uh, on the offhand. It rolls a two on the D6. So you, so you have a total damage of four. So it's plus four damage, and it rolled a two. So plus four to its damage roll, so it hits me for six. Okay? First, you check defense. Do you have def uh, That is the total amount of automatic defense your entire outfit gives you, 
and it only applies if the monster's natural six rule is equal to or less than the current defense. This is a new rule for version three that I think is way too complicated. <laughs> I saw that post. <laughs> yeah, that was me. That was me. So uh, basically it says that if you have a defense, um, so if I'm showing this sheet here, this box here, right now I don't have anything, but if you have something in the defense area, when you when they roll their damage, if their natu if their damage is less than this, then you add, then you subtract this value from the amount of damage they're doing. Why? Anyway, uh, so if you have a bunch of pieces of armor with defense values on it, then you then you combine that, and that's the total. Uh, your effective defense is two, and you would subtract two uh, from the d six roll, which was two or less. Since it was a natural two, we can knock the incoming damage down to four because my defense was two, right? Six minus four, six minus uh, two, four. Now, check the armor value. You can use, you, yeah, I'm, oh, I'm planning to block this hit. <laughs> now, check the armor value at the location. That is the AV. Sorry, AS. Say you have sleeves, which is a, has an A of one. This automatically, re so this is your defense. This automatically reduces one point of incoming damage. I don't know why they did it this way, but whatever. Now, check if you want to use your shield. Hey, the Hidden Stone, thank you so much for becoming a subscriber, I appreciate it. Now, check if you want to use your shield. Say you have a shield with an S1, this means you may deflect max of one damage to your shield if you desire, causing half a pip of damage to the shield for each one point taken. You're like, what the? That's where I was. You choose to do so, so you shade in half a pip. That's right, half a pip on shields. Finally, you can divert two more incoming damage to the hit location, wearing down that weapon. All right, so I'm gonna translate all of that for you. I'm gonna tra hey Brian, what's going on? I'm gonna translate all that for you to make sense. Here's how that makes sense. It doesn't, but here's how the get Martin wanted it to make sense. You've got this defense value and stuff like incantations and stuff like oils and things that are potions that you find add defense values of percentages. Could be a one, could be a 0.2, could be a three, could be a 0.4, right? Whatever that is, that those values are added in the specific location where they're supposed to be, summed up and then put down in this total block box at the bottom. Yeah, I, I'm explaining it. So that's some number. So let's say that number for the example that the wonderful land so graciously helped translate. Let's say it's a two. So my defense is two. When they roll their damage die, the D6, if they roll a two or less, you subtract that number, your defense number, from the total damage you're about to take. That's it. This I shouldn't even call this shouldn't even call this defense. They should call it like damage aura or something. But they call it defense, for lack of a better word. But that's what it is. It's a damage aura. So the that kind of says if you roll if you the amount of the amount of force that you're hitting me with, if it is less than my aura, my aura buffets some of that damage that you're gonna hit me with. That's what that is. Okay? So it, that's what it is. If, it, if, you're, if the force of your damage is stronger than my aura can handle, it goes through my aura and it hits me. That's what that means. All right. But how do we defend ourselves? This AS value, armor and slash shield value, defend automatically deducts damage from the place where you get hit. So if I were to get hit, you see this A1 here? If I were to get hit in the legs, then I would deduct one point of damage from the incoming damage coming in. So that's your defense. So when you're thinking of how do you get hit, it, it can be very confusing. <laughs> exactly, Kate. It doesn't need to be this confusing. They could just call this, instead of saying it's defense, it's, 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 a, it's a defense aura. It's a defense aura. And that's what I'm gonna write on here because that's what, and if the defense aura it's, if your hit is not strong enough, your defense aura absor absorbs some of the damage. 
if you get hit, you're you don't have a you don't have a like when you get hit, here's all your here's all your armor, all those add to this one value, and that values your defense. This game doesn't work that way. It says where you get hit, the armor on that location is what gets deducted. So if I get hit in my legs, I have an armor value of one, so therefore I subtract one from the damage. What you can do also is you can say, let's say for instance, I'm about to get hit for, and let's let, I'm gonna walk through, walk through the math. I'm about to get hit for 20 points of damage. 20 points, that means that with modifiers, with everything, I get hit for 20 points of damage. My aura blocks six, taking me to 14 points of damage, okay? My, uh, my armor, which is like a four, takes me to 10 points of damage. So I'm getting hit for 10 points of damage. I don't, I, I have seven health left and I'm getting hit for 10 points of damage. If I directly take those hits, it's gonna knock me out, I'm gonna die. What you do is you can incur damage on this item by shading in these boxes and each box you shade in is one less damage on you. Defense is way too complicated for what it needs to be. Period. But you would then say, okay, I've got, I've got 10 coming in. I've only got seven health. Then I'm going to shade in one, two, three, four, reducing four more damage off of, the, off of what's coming taking it the six damage leave and then I'll just take the six damage and have one health. Yeah, you have to play like the Excel file that the Excel file that Nova Girl's talking about, someone made a calculator that says just put in how much damage you're going to take and I'll do the work for you. And that's what that is. But that's how it works. So I explained that properly, right? Defense, it's a defense aura. Armor value, the location the, the, the true defense of how much the location you're getting hit can reduce. I got hit on the offhand because of these stupid rats that I rolled uh, on my buckler shield. My buckler shield has a zero for shielding because it's stupid. But I'm going to block it still, and with shields, you take half a pip. Why half? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't freaking know. Ask Martin. But I think the fence needs to get a refix because that's not cool. And what that does is I negate that one damage. <sighs> it does lead to some funny, interesting choices, <laughs> but that's kind of, that's how defense works. Attack seems simple. <laughs> defense seems to be more complicated. So I'm diseased. I got disease one, so when we get back around, I'm gonna roll a die, and if I roll a one, I take, when I roll a one, I'm gonna take one point of damage. But I didn't take any damage because I blocked it with my shield, and my shield took a little bit of damage. Okay. Ugh. Continue on. So I once again got to hit these stupid rats for 50. I rolled a 41, that will work. 41 does that hit that I love so much. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. What's a six? What's a six mod? Um, it doesn't matter. I'm still hitting them. So <laughs> that's five damage that I'm hitting them for. So that would be one, two, three. So I'm going to kill them. I'm going to kill them. I won. But they get to hit me back, right? They get to hit me back. Let's see if they disease me again. 80, 89. That's a swing and a miss as I take them down. So I've killed all three, they've died, thank God. Okay, rats are dead. <laughs> yeah, it's cheap, like more consumable. So we've killed them, we've beat them all, they've been defeated, and now that they've won, when I kill them, I roll, I roll on this table. So what we do, So basically, here's the parts table, the P table. I'm going to roll on P2 to see which parts that I get. So on a 1 to 5, so I'm going to be following this section, 
All right, when I roll. So I'm going to roll a d100 and see what I find from these rats. Stupid disease. Uh, 89. 89. So 89 is here. Hey, look. I got a brain. Many believe eating the brain will enhance the intelligence. Duh. <laughs> All right, so we go to our sheet. Because this is stuff we got to mark down, we got to keep track of. And this is why I say make a fillable PDF. Because you're going to write a lot. We beat some giant rats, our encounter was some giant rats. Their AV was 25, their defense was 0, and their damage was minus 2. Uh, their health was 3, 2, and 2. When I killed them, I rolled on the P2 table, and their abilities was disease. And pack tactics. Uh, reward for beating them. I get 100 gold for beating them. Look at that. Look at that. 100 gold. 100. I'm pulling it up right here. See that? Reward. 100 gold. So I got 100 gold for beating them. Um, so if, if you, this, this encounter table, this encounter table is only if you beat them, if you kill them. You write them down here and then you fill it out. But I got 100 gold for killing them. Sweet. I feel good about myself. I also got a, brain, a rat brain. So rat brain, uh, rat brains, it's worth 19 gold. So I have one brain, that's funny. That's worth 19 gold when I sell it. Ta-da! And that is my, and the encounter is done. Good grief. Okay, so that's the encounter. They have been beaten. There were rats in there. And I'm just going to use the paws of these to point out that there was an enemy in here that was rat. Right? I've beaten them. They are dead. And now I can search the room. And searching the room, I get a plus 10 mod for searching this room. So let's see what we find. Ooh, brains. A 5. I found a 5. Plus 10. 15. <laughs> so let's go on the let's go on the flying table and see what 15 gets us. I'm rolling fantastic. So it's gonna cost me two time to search through there. Moving through some of the rubbish strewn about the floor, a small snake. Oh my god, are you kidding me? A small snake lashes out and bite the adventurer's hand, injecting its venom into the veins. Shade in two pips on the poison track. <sighs> Son of a Yay. It, Gerard's doing great. <laughs> um, so, uh, also, doing that search cost me two time. So, we come down to the timetable and we do one, two. We might have to run into another encounter, so we need to roll. So, we need to roll a d10 and equal to or less uh, for encounter. Roll, d sorry. Sorry, sorry. Brain. Brain. If it triggers an effect, you must deal with it immediately. See time track. Time track. Uh, uh. At each time the wandering monster symbol shows on the time track, there's a chance that the monster may appear. The players roll a d10, and if the result is equal to or less than the number shown, the monster appears, and you have to fight it. So I need to roll a 5 or higher. Uh, that's a 94 minus 20. So that's a 74. Oh, God. I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm so going to die. Oh, this is going to hurt. Oh, this is going to hurt. Let me find the card. I can heal now. Oh, you, uh, you can heal now if you want. Uh, I could, but I like pain. I like pain. I could do that. <laughs> I could do that. Uh, yeah, the game's great. Hey, hey, Desir, how's it going? Desir Studios, welcome, welcome, welcome. So what are we fighting? 
<laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so we're finding an orc champion who 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 seems who seems to be who seems to be pretty strong. He seems to be pretty strong. He's got 16 health. Just one. Yep. Uh, his defense is five, so whatever I roll, I'm gonna subtract. I have to subtract five from it. And when he hits me in the face, it's gonna add plus two to whatever he rolls. And he needs a 55 or less to hit me. This, you remember I said this game was either five minutes? <laughs> He's not undead. He's not undead. He's not undead. Is he a dead one? A dead one. Just tuned in. What character you... Oh, what character am I playing now? Um, I'm playing a... Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm playing a human warrior. A <laughs> dead one. <laughs> Uh, a human warrior that I'm turning into a, cler a cleric. Uh, strength and int are at 50, so I've got some stuff. Oh my god. Okay, so. Combat rolls, because I can't roll. 89, I miss. 67, he misses. Thank god. Okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is worse than the elf archer I got. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Here we go. 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 Come on. 33. I hit him. Yeah. I hit him. Four. I don't think I could damage this guy. His defense is five. <laughs> I have to roll a six to even remotely touch his health. Good God. I think I might run away. I think I'm going to run away after this round. <sighs> no, running, running is a dex check. <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to die. <sighs> so a four on his defense five. Uh, oh, the monster reaction. Thank you, thank you, monster reaction. Uh, one. A one, uh, he's gonna get, he would get a plus ten if he was, if I, if he had less health. He's not. Fifty. You rolled a fifty. Perfect enough to punch me in the head. Where is he gonna hit me? Uh, searching for Amazon and eBay, but nothing. Yeah, if you go to drive through, let's let's take a take a short stroll before I roll my death. Short stroll, and I gotta log in first. You don't get to see my login. Hold on. Login. All right. If you go to drive through RPG, and you do D one hundred dungeon. Here it is, book one, and it is thirteen dollars and forty-eight cents for the whole game. And then you just need dice. This comes with sheets, everything. That's what you're looking for. There is an adventure um, book that actually has a story, so you're not. So after you get through all the dungeons from the base game, you can get book two, which has a story. And this is the map stuff that I have that you see here. It's like six dollars and twelve cents. And book three is more, and then there's book four with more rules. They've got a lot of stuff. They've got content for days. Book five is more story. So they've got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of content. So um, the world's called Terra. Terra. <laughs> the version two is available, but this is the latest version. And I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, every single time there's an update, you're going to get it once you buy this. So you could do that, or you could go to um, BGG D100. Files. D100 game. Here is the print and play from version 2.2. Free for you all. Free. I have 3.2, but this is 2.2. What are the differences between? Differences can be found here. Click. Thank you for taking me to 
Martin's site where I can go to drive through RPG or BGG to find it. The differences, there's differences between each version, but you get to pick it. And if you go, if you're like, well, I want the accessories and I don't want to print them myself, the Game Crafters are here. You can go to get the Game Crafters website, uh, which is thegamecrafters.com. Find Martin Knight's location here, and here is all the bling that you can bling to the bling bling of what you want. Bling. Okay, cool. I was about to die. Yep, version 2 is for MBDG. But I was about to die. So I'm going to get plus 2 damage to... You roll an 8, so he's, hit, he's hitting me in the waist, and I have to make a belt check. And he's hitting me for 5 plus 2, which is 7. So my waist... <laughs> I'm running away. I can't fight this guy. So my waist... Um, I have a plus 1. I have a 1 on it, so instead of a 7, it's a 6. Okay. So I'm getting hit for 6. 6, down to 14. And I need to make a belt check. So as long as I don't roll a 1 and 2, I get my healing potion. So there was nothing in my belt three slot. Nothing's there. So that does not break. Okay, cool. I'm running away from this monster because I can't kill him as weak as I am. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, let me read what escaping is and realize that my dex is 20. When the adventurers escape, they do not get an attack roll or a combat action and must pass the escape action test. The escape action test is, I do a dex check minus 10. <laughs> so my, my dex is 20, a minus 10 is a 10, which means I have to roll a 10 or less. Oh, God. Oh god, I'm going to die. <laughs> this is going to be short-lived. Let me see, do I automatically escape and the monster just gets to brain me in the head? Or do I... I gotta look this up. I gotta look this up. I'm scared. I'm scared for myself. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I gotta go to combat. Here we go, combat. Let's see, escaping. Escaping. When an adventurer attempts to escape a monster, they do not get, a, get an attack roll or combat action for the combat roll. They instead must make and pass an escape combat test. And if successful, the monster is added to the dungeon sheet in the area it was encountered, and the monster is removed from there. If successful. For now, it doesn't say what happens if you fail. For now, the adventurer is safe, but if they leave the area and return later, they will have to encounter a monster again, and it will be back to full health. If the test fails, Move to step five of combat, and the, <laughs> and the adventurer loses two health. So that means <laughs> once you pass the rules of ambiguousness, the game is so much fun. It is fun, but I'm going to die. So basically, so basically, if I try to escape and I fail, which means I have to roll a 10 or less on a D100, I get away. Otherwise, the monster is going to attack me, and I lose two health. Solid. 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 Solid, solid, solid. Oh, boy. <laughs> it says, 60 bucks, not bad. We'll get later this week. Thanks, guys. And Kanji Studios made me buy it. <laughs> Okay. Oh. I have to roll a six to hit this guy. He has 16 health. I have a potion that I could drink right now to get four health back, which um, I, can, I think I can do in combat because it's on the belt. And I don't, because it's on my belt, it doesn't mean it takes an action to do it. So let's do that. Monster reaction first. Monster reaction. Please run away. 
Uh, monster action on a... Oh, I was supposed to roll on a 10. God, an idiot. Five. Uh, he's just going to do a regular attack. Um, so... I am going to drink... Uh, uh, not yet, not yet. How hard can he hit me, right? Really? <laughs> Uh, I rolled a 63, so I missed. He rolled a 74, so he missed. His reaction. Seven. Monster has less than half health. It will attempt to escape. Nope. Not trying to. I will let it escape. I just need to roll... If I roll a 10, I can forego this death. I rolled a 9. Sweet! I should have tried to escape. So I do hit him. How much do I hit him for? And what's my mom? Uh, my mod is a three. Yep, my mod is a three, so that's seven. So I hit him for seven, minus five, two. One, two. Doing some damage. <laughs> uh, oh, you have to leave for work, but we'll definitely watch the rest of this later. Thanks again, Kanji. Later, Tara. Later, Tara. Let's see what we're dealing with. He did a 58. He did a 58. He did a 55. Take that, sucker. So he does not hit me. <laughs> what is his uh, reaction? A nine. Monster damage last round. Monster damage last round. It will attempt to escape. Yes, it's going to escape. It's going to run. So it says, if the monster was damaged last round, it will attempt to escape. I did damage it. I hit it in the pinky toe, so it's gonna try to run away. And I'm gonna let it. I'm not blocking you. Go away. Go away. So the orc champion runs away and he stays. He, he's basically there. He runs away. Uh, what happens when the monster escapes? When the monster escapes, the adventurer can let it go, attack, take a command, take a combat action, or block its escape by passing. So if I block its escape, I gotta pass a strength test. Um but it's running away. I don't feel like fighting this creature any longer. So, go away. What happens? Alternately, so when a monster attempts to escape, the player can simply allow it to escape. It is removed from the combat track, or they may still, or they may still perform their attack, hoping to deliver a killing blow. However, the monster is not killed by attack. By the attack, it is removed from the combat track. Yeah, let's see if we can. Let's see if we can ding it on the butt on its way out. No, we did 98. So he gets away. So the monster runs away. He's gone. He is gone. That was very, very close. That was very close. I could have died. All right. So we searched this room. We found a stupid ant and we didn't find anything. And then we have to deal with that. No, we got poison. That's what happened. We got poison. <laughs> got lucky this time. I did. Okay, so the, questions, the question Pontus asks is, what happens when you run into this scenario? You hit a dead end. Because Martin said that this is the potential of happening as you're rolling, what really happens is you find a secret entrance to go somewhere. I found the secret entrance over here. I'm going to basically move the time track where I need to spend one oil. And then, boop, we're finding out where we're going. We're in a yellow area. That's where we're moving to. Yellow areas are empty. They are empty, empty, empty. I can search them. There is no mod to add whatever I find. So this will just be a straight roll to search. So I'm going to do that. So no mod. What do we got? We got a 99 for the find table. 99! <laughs> the rat was more dangerous than previously thought. So on the fine table, a 99 is this. Sifting through the rubbish strewn about the floor, the adventurer startled to find a skeleton. Ah! It has been a good source of nourishment. Wait, what? It has been a good source of nourishment for the small insects and rats that inhabit the dungeon. A quick search reveals the poor chap had very little at the time of his death. That is, apart from this magnificent treasure 
So roll on the uh, TC treasure C table minus 15 on our roll. So treasure C table minus 15. What magnificent things do we find? I must know. Do we find legendary armor? Do we find minus 15, right? Minus 15. 96. Holy crap. That was a good roll. What would I have found? That would have been interesting. But minus 15 takes us to 81. 81. 81. So. <laughs> 81. Gemstones. Is this the letter quest? No, this is rooms. This is just rooms. This is not the letter quest. Um, so 81 gets us gemstones, a small bag filled with valuable gemstones worth 1,120 gold. So we grab our lovely stuff. We've got um gemstones, so gemstones. The value is 1,120 GP. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your sacrifice for me to become rich. This is cool. Look at this. I could get fate points back. I could find legendary armor, which would be nice. A, a Vorpal sword is always welcome. <laughs> so we got there. The room has been searched. And we've got three rooms that we found so far. Okay, so... We're cool. That ends the round. Time keeps on slipping. And we go to the next room, which is a combat room. And you have to all you you must always I want you to remember this because you're like, why don't you spin it to go up because it's going to go down. You must always, 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 always put the arrow in the direction that you're going. OK, so we move over here. We've run into another encounter and our encounter is going to be minus 20. Uh, 87 minus 20, 67. So on the encounter table, a 67. Uh, oh, wait, what? 67, 67. <laughs> I was like, no. Uh, but this is even worse. A 67 is a skeleton. Oh, but girl, why did you have me come into this dungeon and not just do the thing? Why? A skeleton spider. Oh, God. Okay. So let's talk about our skeleton spider. And I'll go back to the table because we've got the card right here. All right. So. I want to get the symbols. Sorry. I want to be able to explain the symbols of what this creature is. Because they've got some abilities that we need to go through that i got to read to you. And they've got a symbol that is a skull, which probably means that it's going to mash my face into the pavement. Uh, so let's see. The skull. Skull. The skull means something. I found it once, and I forgot it, so I'm looking it up. If anybody knows in the chat, pop it up. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't write no more for your spider issues. I wouldn't have run into the spider. I probably would have. All right, so skull on. Now let's go to the counter table and see if it does anything. I think that just means they're undead. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, so. Let's talk about this monster. Uh, 45 attack value, four defense, plus two to attacks, 15 health. So a little bit under where they are, because if I beat them, I roll on the parts table. Um, and they have their abilities are regenerate, resurrection, web, and surprise. Great. Regenerate. The monster has the ability to restore lost HP. Each time it rolls a nat one on the die, it will restore on the hit die. 
it will roll it will restore two health cool monster parts oh it's monster parts okay 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 uh resurrection when the monster is killed it may resurrect and come back to life after killing a monster with resurrection and before it it has been looted roll 1d10 if you roll a one it immediately returns to life with full health we know how this is going to play out don't we don't we web at the end of each combat round in which the monster is still alive the adventurers mu uh, makes an avoid web test to determine if they will get an attack or make a combat action in the next in the next round so it's our dex plus 20 um and we get to add our dodge to it and my dodge is nothing because i'm a cleric wow if i fail i lose a turn they also have surprise the monster may surprise the adventurer when it first appears before the first round of combat begins make a surprise test <sighs> if the test fails the monster makes an immediate attack roll against the adventurer it is an intelligence test minus 10 and i can add a where and I do have a plus 5 on aware. So my intelligence is 50 minus 10, 40, plus my aware, which is 5. So I need... For tests, I believe it's less than. I just said it when I was doing setup. Uh, yes. Greater than. Greater than for tests. Greater than. Right? Greater than. When a natural rule... I believe it's greater. Attack is less than. I think test is greater. Um, at times in game, adventurers will need to make a test to perform a check or achieve certain goals. The game will make reference to tests such as strength minus five or intelligence plus ten. In either case, the player temporarily applies the modifier to their uh, characteristic and roll a d100. The, this result is compared to the characteristic, and if it happens to be equal to or below. The advanced modified value of the task has been accomplished. And it's just, okay, so it's less than, less than, less than, less than. So let's see, we're doing surprise first. Intelligence minus 10, so 40 plus aware, 45. 45 or less. 45 or less. 39. So no surprise on me, jerk. Okay, so it says at the end of each combat, so the first round, so you tried to jump me. I got away. So now it's time to fight you, and if I hit you, next round I gotta test to see if I lose my turn. So I need a 50. 46, that's about it. Let's see, oh, monster reaction, sorry. Monster reaction first. Monster reaction is a three. Uh, they'll just do an attack. So now it's my time to see what my mod is. Uh, so a nine, oops, sorry, a nine is damage mod, minus one. Sweet, three minus one, two. Defense four. Hey, Mike, thank you so much for becoming a sub subscriber. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, all rolls are less than, okay. So I do no damage because it has a defense of four. Awesome, that was, that was, that was not good. <laughs> Oh, wait, I rolled less than an 8. I rolled less than an 8. I rolled less than an 8. Experience, please. Experience tracks. So on adventure sheet characteristics, when a natural roll on, the no on normal dice is made during a test, oh, it's during a test, or including when rolling to hit in combat, oh, it's when I hit. I got to get a 10. So if I, the time when I rolled a 9, I should have uh, gotten some experience, but I forgot. Anyway, 45. 14, thank you. Horrible creature. You're going to hit me for... 4 plus 2, 6 on my... Back! So you got a plus 2 mod to that. So, 4 plus 2 plus 2. So, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8. Solid. 8. Eight on the back. I, I gotta take it. I have no defense there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. That was like the worst roll imaginable. I'm going to die. 
Um, for the next round, I can, well, let's see the round order. Let's see the combat order. Please run away. Please run away, spider monster. Please. All right. I got to pass a test. I gotta pass a web test, uh, dex plus 20. So my dex is 20, so 40. So I need a 40. I got a 35, so I'm good. So I dodged it. Now, we're on to the next round. The end is nigh. <laughs> I know Greg, right? <laughs> so, oh my god. What is happening? Wait, should I have been fighting this monster? Yeah, I did the minus 20, so I did do that right. Okay. Monster reaction, D10. Run away, run away. Five, nothing, it's just gonna fight me. Um. I'm not equipping, I'm drinking. So I'm gonna drink this potion that's on my belt to gain four health. Going up to 10. Let's do it. Ah, 51 and I needed a 50. I hate you. All right, monster. 39. You know what this is? This is folklore all over again. All over again. Two plus two on the two slot, which is my back. <laughs> so six damage <laughs> out of four health. Uh, I can't escape. I my my dex is garbage. Uh, six. What are you gonna do with a six? Just a regular attack? Oh, I need to do the web check. I need to do the web check. Uh, 80. I lost, so I've been webbed. Forfeit next attack, combat action, or escape. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Try facing the monster. <laughs> I know, right, Kevin? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. I'm going to, we are going to die. Uh, so let's see, monster gets to attack me. I'm web. I'm just kind of, kind of screwed. It says I can, uh, the player determines their course of action. They will greatly depend on the monster's reaction. If the monster's reaction is this game, they eventually block. I can equip. That's all I could do. The the event the items uh, has equipped, so it says I can forfeit an attack to equip anything. So I'm gonna put one of my lesser healing potions back on my belt. I'm gonna need it, but I can't do anything else. What do you got? What do you got for me? Fifty eight. You missed. Uh, I need to test Thirty-seven. I am good, so I can attack this round. The monster's reaction is a force. It's gonna just regular attack. I believe in myself for the forty-seven, which is a hit. I believe in the mod. I roll. Why do I roll? <sighs> Monster, 71, it misses. I need to test. 99, I lose my turn. It is going to bite me in the face. 96, it misses. And we're gonna go round and round and round and round. Why is it every time I enter a stream, your character's about to die? <laughs> Martin, <laughs> he does hate me, he does hate me. Um, so let's test the web effect. The web effect is rough, man, 85. I'm gonna drink this potion uh, for four, going up to eight health. 
uh, it is going to react a two. Uh, yeah, it is a, uh, <laughs> a seven. <laughs> this is amazing. So a six is going to hit me on my main weapon. Uh, sorry, that's damage. That's damage. Five is going to hit me in the hand. I don't have any hands. Or six. Plus two. Ba-boom! <laughs> that takes me to zero. I pass out. So let's talk about what happens when we die. Everyone who has played this game has had better. Res uh, when monsters killed, that's not one. People die if they are killed. Um... Life. Sadly, when an adventure has no life remaining and has lost their last HP, they have died. <laughs> but um, I'm looking for life. Like a cat, like a cat has nine lives and can cheat death on many occasions. The adventurers are blessed with the same luck and have a number of lives which can be used each time they would lose enough HP to kill them. Whenever an adventurer's HP is reduced to zero or less, the player may spend one life point to cheat death and instantly restore all of the adventurer's lost health. Remove and remove all disease and poison pips shaded on the adventure sheet. Wait, so. Fate point. Fate point. <laughs> oh no, we're using life. <laughs> so, I'm gonna use life to get a. So, we go down to two. I heal to full. And boop, boop. So, I stand back. The cleric stands back up with the blessing. <laughs> yeah, I stand back up with the blessing, and here I go. I got a test. I'm, I'm in the web. The light of a loon protects me. And I roll a 25, which means I'm not stuck. Come on. I just got up. I'm pissed. I'm ready to fight. Let's do it. 42. <sighs> you are killing me, game. One stupid point of that. I, I can't hit this guy. His armor is ridiculous. Let's see what he does. The light of a loon has dimmed. 88, it misses. I need to test for the web. 37, I'm good. What's your reaction? Five, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh, I rolled the wrong die for reaction. Reaction, five. <laughs> so it's just going to attack. Come on. 53, that's no good for me. 14 for him is a hit. Uh, he hits me in the back. Two, four, six damage. Going down to 14 health. Because he just chains like nobody's business. My, um, his reaction. Three, he's just going to attack me. Uh, the web effect. I avoid it. I'm rolling great for the web effects. But 91, that's no good. He is going to hit me for 28. He does hit. Where is he going to hit me? On the back, probably. Uh, yes. So, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Brutal. I'm not geared up. I'm not geared up at all. I'm dying. And if I try to run, I'm going to die. He needs to escape. So, let's see what he does. 10! Yes! He runs away! Oh. <laughs> yes! 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 Minus 20. He runs away! Thank you, game. Thank you for sparing my life. <laughs> oh. Oh. He runs away. Go away. I don't want to fight you anymore. Good lord. Okay, so... Oh. I, was I was just counting on that 10. I was like, come on, 10. The monster gets away. I'm not even going to try to hit him. Okay. Um... 
I dealt with the area effect. Now I can search the room. I don't want to. <laughs> I really don't want to. <laughs> I really don't want to. Because next round, I have to roll and roll less than a, a greater than a five, or else I'm gonna fight another monster. Oh god. Okay, let's do it. Let's search the room. <laughs> let's search the room. Be so bad. Because if I search the room and I run into a monster, and then I gotta fight another monster, it's going to be terrible. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, search by rolling on. We're gonna search the room. Yeah, I can search and heal up. Let's do it. Search the room. I uh, seventy three on that search, and it's a red room, so it's plus ten, so it's an eighty three. Eighty three. <laughs> and eighty three says no time. Sweet. This part of the dungeon was once a library. Most of the books are missing now, but a quick scan reveals a spell book with two spells written inside. Roll twice on the spells table and add those to my spell book. All right. Let's get some spells. So let's see what we're getting. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> so first one's 22. Was there a modifier for the spell book? Let me, let me make sure. Nope, not a modifier. So 22. <laughs> Fireball. Ba, 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 ba. Deal four HP of damage to a monster at the start of the next combat round. Do not do not deduct the monster's defense from it, and it costs me two health. That is a worthy spell to cast. Hmm. So fireball. Uh, minus two HP, and you don't you don't give me fireball. <laughs> I cast it every time. I, I cast it at, at all times. And uh, forty three. Forty three is no gain plus ten intelligence to the uh to the next D one hundred dice roll may only be cast once for each die roll. Ooh. So I gave them no spell, and it cost me minus one HP. All right, two spells, two spells in the bank. Cool. Okay, time to move on. We got a five, so we got to roll the D10. Roll high. An eight. Yes. No encounter. <laughs> yes. This is the only time I'm so happy to roll high. No encounter. <sighs> Breathe, my man. Breathe. All right. So now where are we going? Uh, gr we're going to the green room. I'll put the green room here. Green rooms. Aw. That's the green room. are geographic. Green areas contain random features that may restrict movement, cause damage, or offer rewards. The players roll on the table G, geographic table, and follow the instructions. So we're rolling on the, on the geographic table. Yes. Yes, Brian. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, a heal. A heal. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Nova Girl, thank you for reminding me. I forgot to do the heal. Let's see what the geography has to do first, and then we'll 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 do it. We'll heal. Uh, twenty five. There is no mod for this room, is there? Is there a mod for this room? Uh, there's a search mod. I don't think there's a roll mod. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Uh, just roll geography. Okay, roll geography. Geographic. I rolled a 25 on geographic table. 
I, before I show you this, for people who have the book that's following along, you already know what this is. But before I show you this, I want you to understand something. This game is trying to kill me. Bear that in mind. 25. Lava. <laughs> lava. Pools of glowing lava. Of glowing hot lava gurgle and bubble all around. <laughs> Let me see if I can... <laughs> I found lava. So, uh, 25. Let me find 25. Sweet! There we go. <laughs> so, in this room, we have found lava. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, so, uh, it, <laughs> pools of glowing hot lava gurgle and bubble all around, and every few seconds, pieces of rocks explode into fragments, sending hot lava in all directions. Add lava G25 to the dungeon sheet, which I just put down. Each time the adventurer leaves this area, test lava <laughs> path in order to find a safe way to exit, which is dex minus 10. And I can add my agility and luck to it. So there's the lava. I just added the tile from the, from the uh, ge geographic um, tile set. So there it is. So... Uh, it says whenever I exit, each time the adventure leaves this area. Cool, 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 cool. So I can search the room. I can search the lava filled room. Lava, cool. <laughs> uh, so, but when I leave the room, I have to test lava path and take, take, some, take some damage. But as as nova has been saying to me for the past longest time is to use my last healing potion so i'm going to use my last healing potion to heal four one two three four i have no more healing potion 13 health okay <laughs> You have to. All right, so I got to go back. I got to go back through here. Because we've cleared this room, I don't have to face another encounter. It's just what it is. So I got to go back. But to go back, I have to make my lava path. Uh, tick time first. All right, tick time. Move. Got to do my lava test. So it is uh, dex, which is 20, minus 10, which is 10, plus luck, which is 5, plus agility, which is nothing. So... A 15 or less. 38. I take three points of damage. One, two, three. Yay. And then I hit this room. This room's already been searched. So we go here. I got to burn another oil. And we continue on. No red. I hate you, game. Why can't I just walk through a dungeon, get some free stuff, and not have to deal with it. I'm just saying. My mod's minus 20. So... 77 minus 20, 57. Am I fighting another stupid spider? <laughs> 57, the trickster. Is pack surprise and dark magic. Oh, God. I've already got all the reds for my quest. I just needed two reds. I don't need any more reds. I've got the two reds already. Uh, trickster, trickster, tricksters. You trickster. Ooh, fate roll it. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's true. I'm gonna fate roll it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna fate roll it. I'm gonna re-roll that madness. Fate roll it. So I'm gonna burn a fate so that I don't have to do that. <laughs> so let's see where we're going with it. 24 minus 20 is 4. Thank you, Nova Girl. You are MVP. I'm fighting some rats. Let's, let's take on some giant rats again. Uh, all right, let's do it. We know, we know this deal, so let's deal with their reaction. Run away, rats. Run away. Run away. Run away. Run away. Six. Uh, they're just going to fight. Oh, I keep rolling that stupid die. Three. Uh, they're just going to attack. I don't care. We can fight some rats. Uh, three, two, and two. And let me mark off that fate. Uh, 
Okay. Remember, they have pack, they have disease. <laughs> Kate, Kate, Cynthia, and Rob are the MVPs of Gloomhaven, Gloomhaven Digital. Kate drops the drops the curses in in the um, monsters modifier deck, making them not be able to hit. Cynthia is the ranged killer that that puts arrows through eyes. Rob is the uh, praise the sun damager that beats the dust and breaks off of everything. Me, I just I, I just help I just try to help make them look good. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, so 15, I do hit. What's my mod? Uh, so that's a 5 with a 6. No mod. So just 5 damage, which is actually pretty stinking awesome. That's 5 damage. I'm going to kill 2 of I'm going to kill 2 of them. 3 and 2. But they hit me too. They hit me as well. So 3 and 2. So there's one left with 2 health. He does not get packed because he's by himself. So it's just 25. He rolled an 88. Miss. All right, so what's your reaction? Don't you run from me. Five. Monsters will allow attack. I rolled a 55. I can't hit him. He rolls a 68. Miss. What is your reaction? Six. You're just going to fight me like normal. Come on. Seven. God damn it. 44. 25. No go. What's your reaction? One. Monsters has uh, less than half its HP. It gets a plus 10 this round, so it's going to be 38. I just need to hit it. Come on, hit it. There it is. 15. That's what I'm talking about. Hit him and hit him good. Uh, do I get a mod? No mod, but I hit him for five. But he does get his attack off, so this is a kill. What do you do? 35, 60, miss! Thank you. <laughs> Why are you all taking care of business? <laughs> One shot's enemies. <laughs> so I've killed him. I got a roll on the parts table. So this is moving super, see, uh, uh, parts two table. Parts two table. Uh, 90. 90 on the parts two table. I get more brains. 19 gold. So let's add uh, two brains to the, the pack list. And we beat some more giant rats. Two, two, use pack, and they were defeated, and the and I got brains. So that is my reward. Alrighty, so I won that fight. I'm gonna search this room, and it's a red room, so it's plus ten. So whatever I roll. I rolled a 68 plus 10, 78. Line table, 78. No time. The adventurer has found a secret tunnel. Add the tunnel to the dungeon sheet by making a thin exit through one of the rock faces from the adventurer's current area to the middle section of an adjacent mapped or unmapped area, and mark the tunnel with an S. Uh, movement between these, area, uh, these two areas is now permitted. All right. So I actually have. A secret tunnel token. I was like, what is this thing? This is the secret tunnel token with an S. And it's a secret tunnel that will be here. Uh, that was search. Searched room. <laughs> All right, so that ends that. I've killed two monsters. I've not rolled below 10, <laughs> so, and I'm out of potion. All right, so here we go. Boop, next time. Um, we're going to be moving. 
Okay. Should we go through the secret room? Yes, we shall. Oh, sorry, what am I doing? Control one. Twenty nine minus twenty is nine. So what are we facing? I think it's more rats. It is. I'm okay with this life. I'm okay with this. What is the rats? Uh, what is the rats' reaction? A four is just gonna fight regular, and we're at the three two two stage. Uh, what did I do? Oh, this was attack. I whiffed like you wouldn't believe. What are they gonna do? They hit. Damn it. Do not roll a one. You hear me? Don't do, don't. Okay, two. And they're hitting me in the arm. I don't have any armor there. So, one, two. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Their damage mod is minus two. No damage. No damage. The damage mod's minus two. But I am diseased. No, I'm not, because I didn't roll a one. It did amount to, it amounts to, to nothing. Uh next round. What is your reaction? Eight. Monsters have less than half health. Attempt to escape. I haven't hit you. But I got an eleven. So I did. Almost a ten. Four. On an eight, uh, no mod for me. So four damage. You're gone, and you're down to one. Your turn. Seventy, so you miss. Your reaction. Three, gonna attack. Forty-nine. I needed, I needed 50. I got it. I got it. I'll take it. I will take it. Uh, seven. Does that give me a mod? No, it doesn't. So, two. So, one, two. And now you, your pack means nothing to me. 54. No, your money's no good here. Uh, one, monsters have less than half health, gain plus 10, so they're at a 30, so he's at a 35. But I rolled a 22. And that's all I needed to hit you, I don't care. Eight, just a regular roll, no mod. A nine would have been a minus one, which would have ticked me off. So I do hit you, but let's see what you do. 35, you get me. Do not roll a one. So a nine, ooh, six damage, no. Minus on the legs, minus one, minus one. So six, five, four. I'm gonna take uh, two pips on this, three, two, so I'm only gonna take two damage, one, two. But you didn't disease me. And I beat you, so I roll on parts table. Uh, 69. 69 on the parts table gives me a kidney. Used by some of the occults on added or added to pies. Kidney pie? Kidney. Got one rat kidney. Or 17 gold. Um, and mark off that I've killed another set of giant rats. Let me try to well, start these attack. I got a kid. Built Frankenstein with all this stuff. Steak and kidney pie. <laughs> Rat kidney pie. Mmm, <laughs> good. And now that they're dead, I'm gonna search the room. 
82, it's a red, so it's plus 10, so it's 92. 92 on the fine table. As moving a large moldy carpet from part of the dungeon floor, the adventurers find it was covering a recessed panel. Pry, pry, prizing? This shouldn't be prying. Prying it away reveals a treasure laying in roughly in a roughly carved out hollow. Roll on the treasure B table, minus 15. Treasure B table, minus 15. So we could find something cool. Possibly. 73. Need water, sorry. <laughs> so that would be... Uh, what's that? 58? 58, 78, 73 minus 15 is 58, right? 58, 58. Potion of greater remove poison. Drink to remove up to six pit. Ooh, and it's, it's 240. Ooh, 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 let's put that in the bag. So, uh, we get one, two, potion of greater remove poison. Or 240 gold. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, we have searched that room. Next round. I rolled a one. Minus 20, uh, so that's a 10, minus 20. More rats. <laughs> more rats. So we're fighting more rats. I, I, I will fight rats all day. Uh, what is their reaction? Run away, run away, run away. Nope, they're gonna fight. Okay, so two, two, three. Uh, I rolled a 60. That is no good. They roll a 38, which they do hit me. Do not roll a 1, you jerk. Um, they hit me in the offhand, which is my buckler, um, for 2, minus 2, 0 damage. They're just trying to disease me, basically. All right. Uh, next round, what's your reaction? 7, same thing. You're going to stand and fight. Me, I'm going to do a 48, which hits. Let's see if I can get a mod here. I got a 9 mod. My a 9 mod is a minus 1. So 2, minus 1. 1. Ping. Okay, their turn. Uh, they got an 11, which does hit. Um, so 4, doing 4 damage to my arm. 4 minus 2, 2 damage to my arm. I don't have anything on my arm to block it with, so 1, 2. So you see how now I'm moving a little bit faster in the combat rounds? Um, their reaction. A four, they'll stand and fight. 17, almost 10. But I do hit them. Come on, six. Come on. Come on. <laughs> That's all I have to say to that is come on. So I hit them for one again. I got an exploding die that I can't use. 44, they needed a 25 plus 5, 30 plus 5, four, uh, 35. So, nope, that's a myth. So, their reaction. Monsters less than half health get a plus 5. They have plenty of health for this round. I miss. They hit. Um, they hit me on the back, so it's 6, plus 2, minus 2, so they're hitting me for 6 damage. I'm going to use my buckler. Block, knocking off 4 from that hit. So that would be two. 
I'm going to die because for some rat. Because I can't hit. Girl the nine. Monster damage last round. It will attempt to escape. I did damage you last round. I did no, I didn't. I missed. I missed and you hit me. So nope. No running away. 32, I do hit that time. Um I don't I get a plus one mod. So that's three. That's two of you gone. Thank God, this pack crap is gone. But it doesn't matter because you hit me with a sec. Uh, this is a nine. Give me the legs. You get minus one to this. That's two. And I have legs, things that block, so that's one. So I'm going to take one damage. No, I'm not. Yeah, I am. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. <sighs> what are y'all going to do? Run away. Run away, please. One. Nope, you're going to get a plus 10 on this roll. I got a 10. I got a 10 on an attack roll. I got a 10. Woohoo! All right, so let me get my experience point. Um, this is just regular combat. So my strength gets a... Get that. I get a pippin on my, my strength for that. And then I get the hitch. Uh, that's a plus three. That's ridiculous amounts of damage to you. So you're gonna die. Am I gonna die? You hit me with a two. Are you gonna disease me before you run away? Two on one spot. The one is the head. Ooh, I got something there to stop that. Thank God. Okay, so their mod. They're gonna hit me in the head for two minus two. So no damage. Uh, they get a damage mod, though, of the head location for plus three. They would be hitting for three with that, too, and I'm going to shade off my helmet. Take no damage. Ugh. <laughs> I beat them. I beat, I beat them. I definitely beat them. So, um, uh, what am I getting on the fine table? Uh, 31. No, this isn't fine. This is a parts table. Sorry. Part two. 31. Skin exoskeleton used to make armor and clothing for the rich. I am going to be able to build my own rack. Skin exoskeleton for 13 gold. Okay. That was the monster that was here. I haven't even moved yet. I haven't even drawn the next red card, but I get to mark it off that I killed you. Because you're going to give me some experience points coming up real soon. All I've killed in this dungeon are, is rats. <laughs> That's all I've done. Cool. Cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So that was time. Now it's time for me to move. <laughs> so we're going to move up this way. Come on. Green room. <laughs> I need more rat parts to build that rat. So let's roll on the on the geographic table of elements. Um, this isn't a search, this is just rolling. 33. What do we find? What do we find? Barrels! What the hell is this crap? Anyway, barrels. The area contains a number of barrels. <laughs> the uh, a number of barrels the adventurer can spend some time opening optionally by rolling a d10 on the table below and adding one time to the time track. Add barrels G33. Let's find G33. That's 32. Hey, I don't have G33. Ooh, I gotta write them because they didn't send me my G33. I've got 32 and then the next one up, so I don't have 33. So we're gonna add some barrels. Let's do um, a single door. That is so interesting. I haven't run into a single door yet. Oh, there's a door here. <laughs> and I didn't go that way. That's a door. That's a door. Other than that, 
I will put a barrel. Put this here. Never I, I I've avoided all doors. Oh no, I didn't. I screwed up. I screwed up. I screwed up. There's a door right here. I was supposed to roll for the door here, and I didn't. So sorry, I screwed that up. So there's a door here, a door here, and a door here. And there's a door right here. So I'm going to show you how doors work. Uh, but there are barrels there. I can spend one time to go through it. <laughs> and 8 to 10. <laughs> Um, it says, if I decide to open them, I roll a d10. If I roll an 8, if I roll an, an 8 and 9, I get a weapon. If I roll a 10, I find some armor. If I roll a 6 or 7, it's empty, roll on the end table. If I roll a 4 or 5, it's empty. And if I roll a 1 or 3, I find a giant spider. <laughs> roll out the barrels. I'm not touching that. Ugh. Damn it, y'all. Can we not just go through the door? I don't want to fight it. Fine. 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 I will look through the damn barrel. But I'm going to roll a one, and this is going to be on you. <laughs> the peer pressure. Here we go. A three. Okay, a one, two, or three. The last barrel open is hiding a giant spider and it comes to curls of the leg and attack. Encounter a giant spider. Your fault. <laughs> this is your fault this is happening. So they, uh, they have a two defense. They have six health. There's just one spider. And uh, a giant spider. This is all your fault. <laughs> I didn't want to search it, but no. No. Yeah. Uh, they have web, so it won't matter on the first. Let's see what the monster does. A three, just a regular attack. Web doesn't come in right now. I rolled a five. Oh, it's another pip. Pip, pip. Okay. Um, so I do hit, and I get a minus one mod, so that's a four. They have a defense of two, so I hit them for two. <sighs> Their turn. <laughs> you don't have to listen to us. <laughs> Use my roll, I rolled a nine. Uh, they rolled an 82, that's a mess. So what are they doing this turn? Two. If it has less than half health, it doesn't have less than half health. All right, so come on. I rolled a 15. Or five, which is nothing. A three uh, to hit. They have a defense of two, so I hit them for one. Oh, I forgot to do the web. I forgot to do the web check. Uh, what did I need for the web test? What did I need for the web test? Uh, 40. I wouldn't have hit him. I would have been webbed. I would have been webbed. I couldn't hit him. And then they would have missed me. And now I'm doing the web test again. Four. I'm good. So now I attack them. Oh, uh, now we do their reaction. Three, which is a regular attack. I attack them. For a 53, which is a miss. They attack me. 23, which is a hit. I'm about to die. Uh, they hit me in the legs. For four, minus one, three. I got legs two. And then I'll block one more, making it one. So I take one damage. Um, then we check for webbing. I rolled a 100. I crit fail. That is a crit fail. All right, I'm going to reuse a fate to not roll that. I'm going to use a fate. Down to one fate. I'm going to re-roll that. 
63, it's still, uh, it is still unwebbed. For the stupid webbing? I'm gonna use my last fate. <laughs> what are they gonna do? They hit me! Uh, for... Three, minus one, three, minus one, two, and the feet, which would kill me, so I spend my next life, and now the one life, back to 20. You thought I'd get knocked down. <laughs> I get up again. Web four, that test gives me, um, to that test, it gives me, um, that was a dex one. So I get to pip in the deck. And then I attack. Nope, that is, that, that was not what I meant to roll, sorry. <laughs> For 51, I still miss. Uh, they attack me. 85, that's a miss. I try to unweb. I get a six, um, which adds in for webbing is dodge, right? Webbing's dodge, so I'm gonna get two pips on dodge. Let's get dodge up so I can do better. And then I attack. Come on! They hit me for a four, so I'm gonna die this way. Um, a two gives them a plus two, minus two. They hit me for two. On the back. This is how these rolls are gonna go. 34, I don't get webbed. Attack. I don't hit. Oh, I keep forgetting his reaction. His reaction's a 10. He will escape. Thank God. Go the frick away. Jeez. I keep forgetting the roll for his uh, reaction. He goes away. <sighs> I'm gonna search the room. Uh, it's a green room. It gives me plus five. So, 71. Sifting through the debris, I find some armor. Armor table plus 15. <laughs> armor table plus 15. 78 plus 15 would put... I gotta do math in my head. Eight, five, eight plus five is 13, right? Which would be eight, 93, 93, 93. Yeah, 90. I'm stressed out, man. <laughs> so the yard table, hey, look, I get some feet. I got some plate mail sabaton on the feet. Put those on. Plate mail. Uh, that gives me a four. Four is really good. And 287 to sell, 58 to repair. And how much damage is on it? Uh, be sick. Of course, I rolled a five. That puts three pieces of at least it gives me four defense if I get hit in the toes. Okay, so that place has been... So. Okay. So we've got one, two, two. We just need two more of these, and we've completed our quest. We hit this. We got to eat, so eat one food. All right. Here we go. Give me a yellow. I want a yellow. Give me a yellow. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't deal with that damn door. No, the door's here. I didn't deal with this door. All right, let's deal with doors so you can see what happens with doors. So there's a door there. We're going to roll a D100 to see what type of door it is. 
Uh, 18. It's an open door. So you go to the door table, roll D100. A 1 to 29, it's an open door. When the handle is turned, the door opens. So we got an 18 on an open door. I will put the open door right there. Uh, the door that I didn't do was here. The door that is here. And the one that I screwed up, that I completely borked, was right there. Okay? This game has a lot of numbers. <laughs> so it's an open door. We're passing through it. Yellow. 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 Oh. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> okay. How many red cards are in this deck? Anyway, a hundred. Um, sixty-four minus twenty, forty-four. What are we fighting? A bear. A bear. Forty-four. We're fighting a bear. Cool. Hey, Bob. Please run away, bear. Big bear. Big bear chase me. <laughs> A four is just going to fight me. Okay, here we go. I rolled a 64. Bear rolls a 34 to slap me in the face. Where is the bear slapping me? Uh, zero in the feet, which is a minus one. You don't have a mod, so it's two. I've got a four. I block it all. Ha <laughs> ha. Thank you, new boots. Now, what are you doing? Run away. Run away. Run away. Sick. You're going to fight me. 49. I hit you. Or six. I got a six on one of them. Uh, so no mod. Hit him for five minus two, three. You have ten health. One, two, three, taking you to seven. Mr. Bear hits me again in the waist. And I need to make a belt check, but I don't have anything on the belt. So for five damage. Did I just break this belt? I think I'm going to, um, my one for the belt makes it four, then I'll do one, two, so I'll get hit for two damage. One, two, right, yep, going to six. Okay. What are you doing, Mr. Bear? You're running away. You're running away, too. Uh -huh. Not running away. And you're not at half health, so I don't care what you're doing. Fifty. You're forty. Nothing. All right. Come on. Run away. Nope. Same thing as a two. Fifty-seven miss. Twenty-three hit. Four. You're hitting me in the arm. Straight up for four damage. One, two, three, four. Run away. <laughs> oh, I do have fireball. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Five. Um, I can cast. Uh, I, I when he gets lower. When he gets lower, I'll cast fireball. When he gets lower, I'll cast fireball. I just need to hit him one more time, please. Come on, come on. That hits twenty-seven. Give me a six. Give me that six. Four. No mods. Four, two, one, two. Fireball is coming out. What's he going to do? Uh, 28, he hits me. Uh, for six damage on my main wet on my rapier. I don't block any of that. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, you know the name of the song. Let's see how I cast the spell. You know the name of the song. Fireball. 
The adventurer can forfeit an attack to instead cast a spell from their spellbook or a scroll from their belt. See spell casting ability. Okay. Looking for how we cast a spell. Spellcaster. Let's go to the rules. Casting spells. Abilities. Spellcaster. Once the spellcaster ability becomes active, the adventurer may use spells they have collected in the spellbook with an int level equal to or less than their current intelligence. See the spellbook section for uh, the added sheet. For instance, an adventurer with an int of 55 can use all spells listed blah, blah, blah. I can use fireball. Well, <laughs> I can use all that. That's all that's saying. So casting a spell, I need to test intelligence plus or minus spell bonus. My spell bonus is plus 20 for Fireball. So I need to cast Fireball, I need to roll a 70 or lower. If I don't, I get a curse. And I get to add Lucky. So I need a 75. I need a 75 or lower. 75 or lower. Kamea, Mea, Mea. Pain, minor damage. Pain engulfs the adventurers and they scream out in sufferance. Minus one. That, my friend, was he. <laughs> he hits me. I'm about to die again. He hits me in the feet for one. I block it. You know what? We're casting Fireball again. <laughs> and I do get it. What's his reaction? I had a 58 for Fireball. That's going to get cast. His reaction is a three. He's going to fight me regular. I do cast Fireball. I do hit. It costs me two health. Oh, I did hit. <laughs> did you hit yourself? It didn't work out. It didn't work out. Um, so I cast it. I hit him this time, four, four, one, two, three, four. He's down to one health. Uh, 41, he does not hit me. What's his reaction? Don't you run now. Seven, uh, he's just going to fight me. All I can do is hit him. 26, I do. And I just need a three or higher. I hate you, game. Nine. <laughs> I needed the dude to hit you. Oh! My last life. Little stupid bear. Funny. After this, I'm dead. Uh, fireball. A hundred. I rolled a hundred. I lose two health to cast it. I roll a hundred. <laughs> I can't hit the guy for nothing. 78, nope. <laughs> 87, nope. 59, no. Nope. Oh, wait, his reaction. His reaction. His reaction. Uh, 10, he runs away. <laughs> he ran away. I rolled a 10. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You have to laugh or else you'd cry. <laughs> and the thing is, the thing is, no one would believe me if you didn't if I didn't stream this. No to be let's be fair. Let's be fair. Oh, <laughs> uh, don't let him run. Sure, I'll do a hit on him. I hit him. I hit him. I hit him. I hit him for 46. I hit him. How much damage do I do with his defense? A crit! A crit! So now I do enough damage to kill him! 
So I killed him. I killed him. I'll take the I'll take the hit. So I hit him and I killed him while he was running off. <laughs> um, I roll on the P2 table. So I killed the bear. Uh, his AD was 42. Uh, mod plus zero. Health. I'm going to roll on the P2 table to see if I can build a rat. He didn't have any. Let's see what we... Uh, 69. 69 on the part two table. Part two table. I got another kidney. I got another kidney. Two kidneys. I got two kidneys, two brains, and skin. Oh, a skeleton and a, and a skin. Skin. All I need is a heart and courage, and I can make a rat. All right, so this has been good. This has been fun. Let's roll on the fine table. Uh, it's a red room, so it's plus 10. So that is 84. This part of the dungeon, I get two more spells. 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 Let's see what we're getting. <laughs> I would click on that one just to watch the carnage ensue. <laughs> First spell, 64, is clone. At the start of the next combat round, a clone of the adventurer appears to fight the monster. The clone is an exact replica and gains all the benefits of the adventurer, but track its damage separately. Any damage received is now dealt to the clone. Damage cannot be deflected, and when the clone's HP is reduced, it disappears. Until the clone has disappeared, the, the adventurer is not permitted to attack as they are busy controlling the clone. So I've got clone, which costs three health pass. And my next one is 58. 58 is alter time. Remove one time from the time track. Can I get a heal, please? Can I get a heal spell? All righty. That room has been searched. It has been searched. And there is a door here. I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention. There's a door. All right, so uh, that's that. Good time and some oil. I'm going to move back to this room. Then we're going to go here. There's no door there. Take that, jerks. Um, so that's moving back. And another time. Here we go. Huh. That kind of match. Okay. So I move into this green room. And what fun! What fun do we have? 53. <laughs> He's no lava. A lever. In a secluded part of the dungeon, the adventurer finds a lever protruding from the wall. The lever can be pulled optionally <laughs> uh, by ro rolling 1d10 on the, on the table. Add lever G52. I don't have G52 either. They don't have leather tiles. I'm going to have to write Grain Crafters and say they shortchanged me a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna roll. Uh, we're gonna roll a d10. Yep, I want to do it. I want to do it. Let's do it. I need a four to ten. I got a seven. So lever tick. After it is pulled, a far off rumble can be heard. Shade one pip on the lever track. So there you go. Okay, that is that. Then let's search this room. Uh, this is a green room. I get a plus five, so that's 39. 
Pull the lever! Wrong lever! Uh, fine. 39. After a lot of digging through little more than junk, the adventurer eventually wipes away the dirt to reveal something of value. Roll on the item table. And I have to shade one time, which I'll roll. I'll roll for an enemy. So let's let's uh, do this in order. Let's shade one time. And then we roll on the items table. So D100 on the items table. Five. I find a leather bag. With a clean and good leather polish, this could sell for new gold. For a few gold. Four GP. So I find a leather bag. Or gold. Okay. That is the probably the most useless thing that I could find. Now I need to roll on the encounter table. Uh oh no. I need to roll to see if I run into an encounter. So this is a four or lower is bad. I rolled a nine, no encounter. Okay. Now that room has been stitched. Okay. All right, so that's not a door there. I'm paying attention, I'm paying attention. I need one blue and one yellow. This is killing me. Um, Tick the time. Let's go. Another green room. What is in this fun green room? What is in it? Uh, 35. 35 is... Barrels! No. <laughs> no. No, thank you. I'm good. I'm good. 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 I don't need... Oh, good. Mm. No, thank you. I'll put this for barrels. How about that? I only have one of those. No, thanks. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, all right. So let's use some more oil. <laughs> and let's continue on. Mm -mm, not interested. Nope. <laughs> Another green room. Oh, wait. That's a door. That's a door that's there. See, I almost did it. I almost did it. I almost did it. This will be, will be there, but that's a door. So let's see what type of door we're dealing with. I almost screwed up. Uh, 99. Whoa. Never rolled that on a door. What do we got? 99. It's an open door. When the handle is turned, the door is open. Sweet. Score. Now we can go to the room. What do we find in this room? 96. <laughs> Geographic table. Please be something good. Please. A grate. Uh, recessed in the floor is a small grate, and after a quick search, the adventurer finds it is covering a narrow pit filled with muck. Something buried in the dirt catches the eye, and the adventurers may try to lift the grate. By making a lift grate test, add... Do I have... I don't think I have 96. No, I'll just go to 88. Yeah, I'm missing some tiles. So, add grate 96 to the dungeon sheet, and mark with a check if it is lifted. The adventurer may attempt to lift the grate as many times as they wish until it is lifted. Strength minus 10. If we fail, we lose a time. We can add strong. I get a plus 5 on that. So my strength is a 50. Minus 10 is a 40. Plus 5, 45. If we... What? You need a weapon. You, yes, search the bells. You need a weapon. That's two nines. That's two weapons. You should listen. What the hell are you talking about, Mike? <laughs> I need... You, you. I have a rapier. I have a weapon. It sucks. I need a better one. You are right. What are the chances of... You know what? You know what? Cool. No, 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 no. We'll do this. We'll do this. Uh, obviously, you have not learned about my dice rolls, so we'll do. 
let's do a lift test. And then I'm going to go back in the other room and, and look at those barrels. Because <laughs> no one wants to listen. All right. So let's do this lift great test because there could be treasure or an item in here. So we're going to do that first. And then next round, I'm going back in the room. We're going to look through the barrels. So sure. Sure. No problem. Uh, this is a strength test minus 10. I need a 45 or less. I got a seven and I passed the test. It's a strong one. I use strength, so I'm going to shade in the strength test on that test. And I got a seven. I passed. Uh, roll on the table below. So I need to roll a five to 10. I rolled a four. It was nothing. I rolled a four. It was nothing of interest. Anything else would have been better. <laughs> no, no, we're going to do this. So now I'm going to search the room. Uh, 37, it's a green room plus five. So 12, 42, 42. Fine. 42. 42. This area is dank. That's a dank area and foul smelling, which is no surprise when a tomb is found hidden behind a dank tomb found hidden behind some uh, fallen rocks. The tomb can be opened optionally by rolling a D10. Let's do it. We're going to shade a time and do it. I think I was supposed to shade a time for the great too. So we're going to shade a time and do it. So I shaded two. I shaded two because I was supposed to do one for the great. Let's do it. Lift it. Uh, what do I need to do? Um, I shaded the time, and we need. I'm gonna roll for an eight. A skeleton clutching a treasure. Roll on the. Uh, a skeleton clutching a treasure. Treasure A minus fifteen. Treasure A minus fifteen. We say. Uh, Forty one. So 15 would be 25, right? 25, 26, 26. So 26, objective item. An objective item is found that may be required for a quest. Check the current quest detail. If it's not needed for this quest, it is instead a fine item worth 100 gold. So we found a fine item worth 100 gold. Cool. So we did that. Uh, the room will search. Then we will, and that's a door right here, by the way. That's a door, just to let you know. All right, and we hit this, so we got a roll. I rolled a nine, so no encounter. Cool. Um, let's see, we're good. Next round. Let's go. No, no. Let's do this. This is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It'll be fun. Uh, this was on the fine table, right? I need to find the barrels. Barrel. Barrel. Here they are. Barrels. Let's do it. <laughs> Y'all wanted this. Just remember, you wanted this. So I have to spend one time spending one oil to roll on this table. You all wanted this. 10. At the bottom of the large barrel is some armor. Oh, you didn't see me do it. 10. At the bottom of the large barrel is some armor. Roll on the armor table. Eighty six. Eighty six. Ooh, new gloves, new gloves. Oh no, I don't have any hand items. This works, scale mail gloves. Scale mail gloves, which is a, uh, A3, uh, 256 gold. And how much to repair? And how much damage is on it? Uh, three, three shades. Three, three shades of damage. We're filling out. A three gloves of that. <laughs> We're filling out slowly. All right. So we've searched. 
These two, they're done. Barrels are done. Uh, that is time. So, and there's a door here. So let me make sure I put doors where doors exist. And there's a door here. Places I didn't go. Door. I'm just put. I'm marking all the doors. Okay, new time. Go here. There's nothing in the room. Um, there's this door, so let's see what type of door it is. Uh, 39. Doors. 39. Trapped! The door is closed and trapped. See trap doors below. You could test decks to open it, and you can add traps. Uh, I don't have anything for traps. And decks would just be a 20. Ugh. Let's take a look at trap doors. Uh, trap lock doors. Trap lock doors have been trapped and locked for a reason, and keys to this type of door are not left carelessly laying around the dungeon for anyone to find. The adventurer is forced to pass a test in order to pick the lock and avoid setting off the trap. They must have a pick required, uh, recorded to their supply area of their adventure sheet, or they can try to pick its lock. Oh. And this was a trap lock door, right? Trapped. Oh, it's trapped. Trap door. Not trap lock door. Trap door. It's a trapped door, not a trap lock. Trapped. Some doors are trapped and will harm the adventurer if the trap is not disabled. When they attempt to open the door, so the adventurer must pass a trap door test in order to change its door code to a zero, to an open. And a trap door is uh, this. Let's do it. I'm happy to be part of this plan. Let's do it. 20. 69. I take a hit. <laughs> I take one point of damage. So if I fail, I spring the trap. Um, the door is not locked. It's just trapped. So it is now open. Because I sprung the trap. It's not locked. It's, it's, it was just trapped. It wasn't a trap locked door. It was a trap. Okay. Next up. What are we fighting? A five. What are we fighting? A 35 minus 20, that's a 15. What are we fighting today? We are fighting a giant bat. They have fly, surprise, and pack. So let's go with a giant bat. Uh, there's... Hey, Rhino10, thank you so much for becoming a subscriber. Appreciate it. So two... Three and three. So let's talk about the horrible things they have on us. Fly. An adventurer fighting a fly monster suffers minus 10 when making an attack roll. They have surprise. Um, I need to make an intelligence minus 10 test or else they get to attack me for free and I, attack and I have my wear. So my intelligence is 50, minus 10 is 40, plus 5, 45. Bruce, it's Bruce Wayne! I roll the 63, they get to attack me. So they, they immediately uh, gains a, get, get to attack me right now. Um, and they have pack, so it is, they need a 35. 44! Ha ha, you suck. Okay, so now we're back to fight. Now we're on regular ground. What's oh well the reaction first, right? Well they get to attack me. They get to attack me. Then I rolled for their reaction, which was a 10. <laughs> I was just watching for his darkness that came the sub. Well you're live. Yay, right. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I rolled a 10. When I did their reaction. And 10 means... If I can hold this up. Look what a 10 means on the monster reaction table. <laughs> the monster will attempt to escape. I'm going to try to block its escape. I'm going to try to block its escape. This is fantastic. I should let it go. I should let it go. I'm on my last life. I could probably die. But I'm going to try to block its escape. I need to test strength. 
Um, strength minus 10. And I can use escape, which is a plus 5. So 45. 45! What? I blocked it! Alright, we continue this fight, good sir. Uh, I rolled an 88. You roll a 61, so you don't hit me. Then what are you going to try to do this time? A 5. Nothing. I roll a 47. Uh, my You're flying, so I get a minus 10, so it's not 50. I miss, because it's a minus 10 from 50 to 40. Right? Let me make sure I don't add anything to fly. Yep, minus 10. So I miss. Uh, they need a 35. They miss too. What's your next thing? I should have let him just fly away. Seven. Just a regular attack. 39. I got you this time, sucker. So 39. They're going to attack me. 56, which is a miss. What are they going to do? Just roll a 10 and get the hell out of here. Uh, nope, they don't get that advantage. I roll an 84. They roll the 63. They don't hit me. We're just dodging each other. Or they're going to do an attack because I can't roll for beans. 17. Stop this foolishness. Exploding die. Thank God. And my mod is nothing. Six. Seven. So seven, so that's... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Took them down to one health. They came close enough and they got brained. All right, you don't get... You need a 25. Sure. 82, nothing. You ain't flying nowhere if you... One... Uh, you get a plus 10 on your next attack. I got a 93. You got a plus 10, 74, doesn't matter. Your next is a 5, just regular attack. I got a 45, I needed minus 10. Nope, 40. <laughs> Need a 40 for flying. Not a 45. Uh, 70, you miss. What are you going to do? 4, nothing. 25, gotcha. I just need to hit you once. That's what I'm talking about. And you're dead, but you get a final swing. 16, you do hit me as I hit you. Um, you're hitting me on the legs. I have an 8. On my legs, I have a 1, making it a 3. I'll take 3 damage. Well, sorry. You have a minus three to this. So that's two. I have, a, I have an armor of one on my legs. So that's one. So I get hit for one damage. And you're dead. I get the roll on the parts four table. I'm going to build me a bat. So let's see. I beat giant bat. Zero mod three. Rolling on the four table this time, and they have fly, rise, and we're doing the parts table for P4. 36. Uh, ribs. I got me some ribs. The ribs are often fashioned into grotesque xylophones. Got one rib. Rib. And that rib gives me 12 gold. Nope, I keep crossing that. 13 gold. 13. Okay. Got ribs. And because I killed that monster, I get I get plus five to a skill. We're going to make that skill trap. Plus five to traps. Sweet. All right. We're doing... <laughs> We're 
we're doing it. Okay, next round. Oh wait, that was that round to do the fight. I had the fight, now it's time to move. We need one more blue room and we're done. We need one more blue room. So I move in here, this is an empty room. So we just need a blue room and we're done. Searching it. Uh, yellow room gives me plus zero. That's just a straight 17. For the fine table, please, please. 17, searching through some of the larger heaps of debris, the adventurer abruptly stops and realizes the piles is made up of diseased and rotting corpses. Shade and two pips on the disease track. Yay! One, two. And look, we're about to test for disease. Yay! Any doors? No doors. Yay. <laughs> Later, Kate. Later, Kate. Thanks for joining. Hey. Cool, 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 Boom. Gotta eat food. Turn of round. I need to roll a d10. If I roll a two or less, I lose two health. Oh, wait, that is not a d10. I rolled a five. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. <sighs> I gotta eat food. And here we go. One blue. One blue. That is not a blue. Oh, go down this way. Why the hell? Let's see what we're finding. 94 minus 20. 74. This is not going to be fun. Hey, remember that orc champion that I smacked and he ran away? He's back. Orc champion. He's back. He is back. 16. Okay. What is he going to do? Roll a four. He's just going to do a regular attack. Uh, 51. That is nothing for me. I needed a 50. He has a 90. Yes. What is he going to do next? Five. Regular attack. 59 for me. That's a miss. Eight for him. Oh, yeah. That, that's, that's, that's a hit. That's, that's, that there's a hit. He's going to hit me in the arms for four. Uh, I have nothing on my arms. I have stuff on my hands. So one, two, three, four. Big fun. Big fun. What's he going to do next? Eight. Just going to keep on fighting because I didn't hit him last round. 72. Miss. 60. Miss. Seven. Gonna attack. You're just gonna keep punching me in the face. 78. Miss. 17. Hit. I'm just gonna let myself die. Um, one. Hits me in the head for a plus three mod, so that is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have a head item that takes one, so that makes it eight. I'm actually gonna break it to knock three off. That's eight. Seven, six, five. He hits me for five. One, two, three, four, five. If I can't roll, I'm going to die. He runs away. <laughs> amazing. 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 So he runs away. All right. Well, search the room. Seven. Uh... <laughs> Oh, it's amazing. Um, it's a red room, so it gives me plus 10, so it's 17. Searching through some... Oh, sweet. More disease. 
just what I wanted and a loss of time with it at that. I have to spend an oil. And two more, one, two. Eight! Yes! Can you feel my sarcasm? I could have cloned. I could have cloned. Uh, I don't know why I don't think of these things. I'm going to move this way. Um, so we do this. Just give me a blue room. That's all I want. Thinking blue room. There's no doors. There's no doors. No doors. Something here. It's an empty room. Uh, 59 straight up on the fine table. Moving away from some rubble, a weapon is revealed. Roll on the weapons table. Look at that. Cost me one time. It's fine, but let's roll on the weapons table. And by God, let's hope we roll high. 31. I got a scimitar. 31. It's a one-handed weapon. It is no better than my rapier. No better. So, uh, slot, it's a hand slot, scimitar, um, damage is plus zero, uh, gold is 73 gold, and to fix it, it is 15 gold pieces. And how much damage is on that bad boy? Of course, three. I roll sixes when I don't want to. See, that's the thing. Y'all are like, well, he always rolls low. No, no. I always roll the opposite of what I need. So that's on me. In my bag because... Okay. <laughs> sure. All right. So that room was searched. I'm out of those, so I'm going to start using these little blue pips to say I searched. Okay. Uh, that ends round. Next round. Eight. No encounter. Going up. I just need a blue. I just need a blue and we won. That's it. Fifty-seven. Can you use both weapons? Uh, let's see. You mean like dual wielding? Let's see about dual wielding. I want to find the page so I can pull it up. Here we go. Here we go. Page 50. As items are acquired, the player has the option to either backpack the item recorded or equip them. When an item is equipped, it must be recorded in the correct slot on the adventure sheet, and only one item per slot is allowed. Weapons need one hand or two hands to wield. When equipping one-handed weapons, the player can record one weapon in the adventure's main hand and one in their offhand. Two-handed weapons always use both the main, but use use, but use one damage track. While shields are always equipped to the offhand slot. Uh, below is an example of how items are equipped to the adventure sheet. It doesn't really say. It doesn't really say. It says that you can put two in, but it doesn't say if you can hit with both. What does that look like? Combat. Combat round. Okay. If the character has two weapons equipped, either either may be used to attack, but not both. There it is. There you go. There's the rule. So it doesn't matter. It, it would have been cool, though, Brian, if I was able to swing both. But, yep. There it is. 
All right. What horrible life am I in now? Uh, what was I doing? Oh, I rolled this, and I got a 77 minus 20, which made it 57. Uh, so 57 on the encounter table is nothing good. It's a trickster. 57 is a trickster, and I will be casting clone. There's three of them with three, four, and four health, respectively. They have pack, they have surprise. So uh, for surprise, I need to do an int test minus 10. So 40, 45, 45, 85. Nope, they get to attack me. So they're gonna get a free attack. They need 35. Well, they got dark magic, too. Ooh. Uh, Spellcasters found in the dungeons have attuned themselves with dark magic. At the start of each round, uh, before step one, roll 1d10 to see which, uh, which magic spell they will use for their round. So this is a surprise attack. What are they casting on me? Three. Shadow Cloak. For this combat round, the monster gains plus four to defense. But they get this free attack. Uh, they need 35, 40, 45. It's 55. They miss. Cool. Now, let's find out what's happening. So, now what are they going to use this round? Four. Same thing. Shadowy Cloak. So, they get um, plus four defense. Well, I'm going to try to hit them. Oh, wait. Reaction, 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 reaction. They get their reaction. Which is an eight. Uh, they're gonna fight me. Now I roll. Five. Ooh, I get to chain in some more stuff. Chain in some more strength. Eight. I rolled an eight, sorry. I don't know why I flipped this over. Eight plus two. Eight is on the way, so it's just straight up. And no mod, basically. And two damage, but they have a defense of four this round, so nothing. What the hell is this? No, 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 sir. You don't get to do that on my stream. Hold on. Port. Hell out of here. No, no, no. That is not allowed on this screen. No. Port. Yeah, that is crap. I got, I, I just, let me see if I can. I don't know if they've vanished off of y'all's as seeing reported, hopefully deleted. Oh, I hate sleaze bags who do crap like this. I really do. Anyway, uh, what were we doing? They were attacking me. I was attacking, but anyway, ninety nine. They don't hit me. Start of the round. They are. For this combat round, the monster gains plus two damage. They will reaction will be to just do a fight. I hit him for 17, so I do hit. Come on, man. These ones are freaking killing me. But they don't have any defense, so I hit this guy for one. Then they're going to get plus two damage if they hit me. 70, they don't hit. Magic, nine, death, the adventurer loses two health if they hit, um, so death bolt, the adventurer loses two health, one, two, then what are they going to do, eight, when monster has less than half health, it will attempt to escape, if it was a nine, it would have run away, then I'm going to fight it, 48, I do hit, Uh, 10, 
that's a minus one, so that's a four. They don't have any defense, so one, two, three, four. Okay, so of the 11 health they had, they're now down to six. Okay, their turn. 95, they missed. Um, they hit me again with a death bolt. One, two. Then their reaction is an eight. Monster has less than half health. It will attempt to escape. Uh, they started with... They're down to six. They started with 11. Which means they lost five health. Is that... Would that be considered, like, halfway? Would that be considered halfway? I think that might be considered halfway. Someone tell me, because it's a... Uh, monster has less than... Oh, less than half. Nope, nope. They, they stick around the fight. They stick around the fight. I rolled a three. I get another tip. Let's see what happens. Uh, it's a three. So, one... Two, three. Now they're at less than half. You have to roll a 35 to hit. Roll a 92. No hit. Don't roll a 10. Please don't roll a 10. Eight. Uh, for this combat round, each HP the adventurer loses restores an equal number of to the monster. Ooh. What are you going to do in terms of this? Seven. You're just going to fight it out with me. Come on. 65. Dang. What do you got? 25. Ooh, I might be dead. I might be dead. I think I'm dead. Uh, where are you hitting me? Main hand. One point. I'm going to take it on the main hand so I take no damage. I'm taking it on the main hand. No damage. All right, what are you doing? Six. Uh, evil touch for this combat round, you'll get plus two damage. And two, monster has less than half, and you get a plus five to whatever you're doing. 60. Damn it. 43. You get a, you get a plus five, so you'd be at 40. You miss. You miss. Next round. Eight. Same thing if you hit me. Uh, reaction six. You fight to the death. I hit you for a 49. And I get a plus two mod, so that is six. I will so I will kill you if you don't kill me. 53. Yes. I kill you. You're dead. I won! I won! I won! Oh my god, I won! <laughs> okay, so... Tricksters. Uh, 35. Oh, they had to defend a 1, but it came out the wash. Uh, plus 0 mod. Or... Um, I or W plus 5. Yeah, I might need to start fights with it for real, but I don't have the health for it. I don't have the health for it. Um, pack, surprise, and dark magic. And I get to roll on the weapons table plus five, or the items table plus five. I need a potion more than I need a weapon, to be honest with you. I need a potion more than I need a weapon. I'm thinking of doing... Uh, I'm going to do the items table plus five, because if I can get a potion, I will be so happy. 91 plus 5, 96 on the items table. 96. That would have been an amazing weapon if I'd have found it, but 96, bag of gems. What, 90, what, what would 96 be on the weapons table? I gotta know. A longbow. Plus 3 damage. Ooh, that would have been cool. Yeah, well. We got an item instead. 
96, bag of gems, 290 gold. One, gems, 290. Okay. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. Yeah, I, I definitely wish I could. I definitely wish I could. Uh, I, I have the hell for it now, but you're right. I should have been using it all along, and I didn't. You're absolutely right. I'm going to search the room, or uh, red room is a plus 10, so that's a 12. Fine. Jesus, I keep getting poisoned. So that's, I keep getting poisoned. So I lose two time, have to burn one oil, and I get two more poison. Wow. This is rough. This is really rough. Okay. I search that room. I'm going to go to this side um, at the next round and hope the good gravy, I get a freaking blue room. Yes! 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 <laughs> yes! And there was no door there. There was no door. Yes! Blue rooms are empty rooms. Blue rooms are empty. They're objective rooms, but if you don't need the objective, they're empty. Yes! Oh, sorry. You move disease instead of poison. You're right. I should be here. I'm not there. Because I've been getting poison pipped all, all night. Thank you, Mike. Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, uh, thanks, Mike. Yeah, I was moving the wrong pip. There's a door here as well. So... So, I'm not fine. I'm not searching crap. <laughs> I am done. So, basically, our objective, remember, for this is to find. <laughs> we had to find two blue, two yellow rooms. One, two, we found three. Two green rooms. One, two, three, four, five rooms. Two reds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And two blues. One, two. <laughs> we won. Ah. No, no, Cynthia. It was, it was all, it was all uh, poison. I was moving the wrong track. Because basically what happened um, was I, let me pull this up. Let me pull this up. I rolled this. I rolled this three times. So I rolled between an 11 and a 15 three times while after I came back to life. So where I was supposed to be moving poison track, I was moving the disease track on accident. And that's what Mike was saying. Mike was saying, um, you're moving disease, not, not poison, move poison. So I just swapped it. So there was no disease. I basically got bit by, uh, I got bit by snakes like three times and got six poison. But we won. We won! Okay, victory! Let's talk about victory. <laughs> oh my god. Poor Gerard. Poor, poor Gerard. So, completing a quest. Once the objective has been met, the quest has been accomplished, and the, and the adventurer receives the reward uh, shown. Add one point to, to the completed section of the quest log. <laughs> so... Uh, quest log track, we completed, um, I gotta go back to the quest log, sorry. This was quest number 1112. Check that off for Gerard. And we get, automatically we get 150 gold. So let's add that, 150 G. Cool, cool, cool. Yes. What else happened? What else happened? 
Um, at one point to the selected, the quest number on the quest tracker. There are several common elements that determine how a quest can be completed, shown below. Sometimes quests will require or allow, yeah, yeah, explorers. Sometimes the quest will ask for certain areas to be explored. Once they're done, you've completed the quest. So, what we do is... So before we, so now we now we deal with what comes next before your next quest, and we're gonna do a lot. So let's do that. Uh, succeeding, failing. I'm getting to the point before I pop this out. Okay, here we go. So after a quest is finished and before a new one is determined, the player performs the following steps in order to prepare for the next adventure ahead. They must always perform the refresh track step and the empire building step if they have any shares. Otherwise, all other steps are optional. Remove all shaded piffs on the keys and lever tracks. Keys and lever, uh, and remove all shaded clock faces from the time track. Note that these, that disease and poison piffs remain on their tracks. So this gets moved out and the lever gets moved out. Cool. Heal. The adventure may seek the services of a healer and remove each each poison pip for forty gold a piece. What the hell is this? And re remove each poison. Oh, remove each for forty, not a piece. Oh my god. No, it's forty each. And restore lost HP to twenty for twenty gold each. Okay. Repair items, sell items. So we're going to do all this stuff. And I want to see how much money I got left to buy some better stuff. Okay, so let's first sell ev sell everything. <laughs> so we're selling everything. Um, I'm going to do the back of this sheet to get my math. Actually, I'm just going to pop up the calculator and do my calculator math. We're doing calculator math here. So um, what do I got to sell? Goodness, this is ridiculous. Um, I'm selling the kidneys. So uh, that is seven, two, two kidneys for 17 gold a piece. So it's 34 gold. Uh-oh. I'll be right back. That is not what I meant to do. That is not what I meant to do. I meant to do this. I forgot it's tied to this. I got to do it this way. I got to do it this way. Plus two brains at 19 gold a piece. So that's 38. Plus... The gemstones for 1,120 gold plus uh, the potion of remove poison. I might use that to get rid of the poison thing. Let's do the skeleton skin. So that's 13 plus the leather bag of crap plus um, the fine item for 100 gold uh, plus the ribs for 13 gold. Plus the gems for 290 gold, and then our quest reward for 150. So all in all, mine, we haven't sold the potion of greater remove poison yet, but all in all, we have 1,762 gold. So let me see what the what the that potion does. Um, I think that's an item, right? Or is it a treasure? I think it's a treasure. Uh, here it is. Drink to remove up to eight shaded pips of the poison track. Yep, I am drinking that bad boy like there's no tomorrow. So I'm going to drink that, getting rid of this. So drink that, no more poison. We're not paying for that. We can pay... So we can pay... I, I can buy new gear... Instead, so that's so we sold a bunch of items. So it says you may sell. Uh, however, damaged items reduce the cost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we can search the market. The player may roll a number of times equal to the Avengers rep value on the tables marked with the, the goal symbol to see what we can buy. So we just can't go searching. We have to roll. My rep is one. So therefore, I can roll on the armor table. The treasure A table, B table, or C table, or the weapon table once. And may buy any of the items rolled. 
All right, so let's see what we find. So on the armor table, I rolled a 26. So there's a torso item out there. I need a torso item. For 78 gold. Okay, I'm gonna buy it. I'm buying it. So. Leather. Curious. Uh, A0. And it's, it's spanking new, so no pips. And 16 to repair. So that is 78 gold off of my money. Minus 78. 1,684 gold still left. So let's go with treasure A, B, or C tables. Um, there's elixirs, brews, brews, and elixirs, but I have a chance at a legendary weapon. That doesn't cost any gold. I roll on the we le weapon table, and then on the legend table to see what it is. I get 100. Let's roll on this table and see what I get. Um, treasure B table. 27, 27 would be an odd objective item. It'd be a, I'd have to spend 150 gold for it. No, thank you. Uh, let's get healed. Cause I can only roll in the armor table once, which is what I did. Uh, let's get healed. I'm going to spend 20 gold to get healed to full. And it's 20. So that gives me one, uh, 1664 left. And I need to repair stuff out. So repair. The players can remove any number of shaded pips on any item damage track by paying its fixed value per pip. For instance, if an item has three pips shaded and a fixed value of three, it would cost three gold to remove a single, nine to remove all three. Okay. Um, let me fix this headgear. One, two. Three. It costs 21 gold to fix it. So one, two, three. So if I fix three, that would be 63 gold. So 63 off mustache. I roll, uh, let me check, let me check, let me check. Let me get this right before I mess this up. Uh, it says the market. I roll, yep, I get to roll on the weapon table. Thank you, thank you, Mike. I get to roll on the weapon table. Let's let's roll high. Let's roll high on this weapons table. 78. I rolled a 78. 78 on the weapons table is a mall. Ooh, I'm buying that. <laughs> so I'm buying that. So let me put my rapier right in my backpack. Uh, and rapier, uh, plus zero damage. It is 75 GP and 50. And it has damage on it of three. And I am buying that mall. Uh, for 265 gold, brand spanking new. 1336 left. So, um, let's put that in my weapon slot. Brand new, no stank on it. No stank. So, it's a one handed weapon. I get plus two to damage and two sixty five gold and fifty. That worked out. That worked right out. So I got I got a new um I could roll on the I can roll on the TBT speed tables. Sure. Let's roll on the TV table and TC table to see what's there. We could get an elixir worth a damn. Uh, 73 on TB. Potion of greater int. Drink 
gain plus 10 to aim, gain in time on time track for 300. And I can use my shield, you are correct. Um, so I could get a greater int potion to boost my int from 20 to 30. I ain't mad at that. It costs 300. How much money I got left? I can swing that. So minus 300. I'm at 1036. And I'm going to drink it immediately to get uh, plus 10 int. So my int goes to its base, which is 30. Then we'll roll on the TC table and see what we get. Uh, 34. What do we got? 34. Another objective item. Wait, was that on the TA? Yeah, it was. So, nope, I don't care about that. So, we're not going to buy that. All right, so we refreshed our tracks. Um, I paid the 20G to heal myself, right? I believe I did. Restore loss HP for 20 gold. I believe I paid that, so that'll take me back with 20. But just in case I didn't, I'll mark 20 off. I believe I did. So I'm at 1016. Um, I repaired some items. I can repair the buckler. Because I can use the block some damage coming up now. Um, it's 16 gold to repair it. One, two, three, four. I'm going to repair my buckler to full. Let's do the math on that. I'm at 9.52. Um, can you buy potions? Training optional. Magic tuition. Once a spellbook has been... Okay, so a training. An adventurer may seek training from a scholar or tutor to improve their skills. Or characteristics on the adventurer's rep value determines the quality of the trainer they can find and set a um, maximum number of pips that can be shaded on the experience track, provided they can pay the cost. Uh, it's 200 gold to shade a pip on the skill track, 2,000 to shade a pip in the strength decks. Nah, we ain't there. We ain't there. And we, if we, and 20,000 gold to increase the adventurer's max primary hit points by one. Damn. Oh, it's 20 gold each? For health? Are you freaking kidding me? Each? What type of crap is that? All right, well, I'll be at four of them. <laughs> that's insane. Uh, that's insane. That is insane. Um, we don't have any shares. I then, uh, after each quest has been played, um, regardless if it has failed or was completed, the player rolls a 1d100 on table J investments and cross-reference results for each investment program the adventurer owns shares in. I don't have any investments yet. Building an empire can secure fame and fortune, and with the right playing adventure may build an empire to rival that of royalty as well as provide. Adventurers can place gold in various forms of investment. There are four stocks to buy into as follows. Finance, holdings, wars, and trade goods. Note, each have different values and risks associated with them. It said required with shares. So somehow I'm going to get a share. I don't know how. I don't have any shares. <sighs> to heal up to full, it is 20 gold each. This is stupid. Bottom line. <laughs> it is stupid. You would spend half your gold healing. So what do I need? Um, I'm at four, so 16. So I need 16.
times uh, 16 times. I need 320 to heal the full. Sure, why the hell not? That's that's stupid. I'm at 632. That's I'm sorry. That's dumb. Uh let's see, what else can I buy? I don't care about that. I want to get some shares. I want to like invest some shares, but I think I have to get them through a quest. I think a quest has to get me shares somewhere. All right. Okay. So at the end of the day, Gerard, I, I still have no rep. But I've got a little bit more protection in battle. I hit a little bit harder because this maul now gives me plus two. So thanks for making me roll, reminding me to roll on that table. My abilities are kind of skilling up, and I got spells to spend, and I'm back to full health. But I'm out of fate. I'm out of life. It's just what it is. Does, does fate or life re come back in per dungeon, or is it you're kind of screwed? Let me check. Just do a flat rate for healing. That's just dumb. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm trying to see if um, fate or life come back in the next dungeon or if they're gone for good. Like a cat has nine lives and can cheat death on many cases. Let's go to this in the book. Fifteen. Uh, okay. uh, like a cat with nine lives and can cheat death on many occasions, the adventurers are blessed with the same luck and have a number of lives which can be used each time they would lose HP to kill them. Whenever an adventurer is reduced to zero or less, the player may spend one life point to cheat death and instantly restore all the adventurer's lost HP and remove all disease and poison pips shaded on the adventure sheet. Sadly, when an adventurer has no life points remaining and have lost their last AP, they have died, and it is time to begin a new adventure. My question is, is this per dungeon, or is this forever? Well, let's see what fate says. Fate points are rare blessings that have been granted by the gods to the adventurers because they, they have fallen into their favor. They can... He spent to reroll any die or dice roll a d6, a d10, or either d100, or the unit die, or a combination of dice used for any roll. If the player is unhappy with the new uh, with the new result, they can carry on spending fate and rerolling until they're satisfied with the new result, or they wish to stop. Hmm. Reputation plays an important part. See before your next quest. So before your next quest, do I get a rep point passing for succeeding? Say I get a rep point. Player must deduct one rep point. If I fail, I deduct it. That's the weird thing, right? So if I fail, I deduct. Oh, here it is. No, this is add one point to the completed section of the quest log and tick the quest numbers on the quest tracker. So let's go to the quest log. So there's no way, so you, I guess you gain rep through quests. Yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens. Somewhere down here. Somewhere. I saw a rep. Here it is. Spider Queen, rep plus one. So you start getting rep. 
about when you're at a decent level. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. So max rep seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Max rep is fourteen. Okay, so that's how you get rep. Um, how do you get shares? Kind of curious. Let me just search for shares. If you have any share, okay. Okay, it'll be all over this section. How do you get share? Is it this point, the investment? The adventurer may have a maximum of 10 shares in each of four investments. It doesn't really tell you how you do shares. Maybe somebody in the chat knows. Yeah, maybe somebody in the chat knows. I don't know how you do shares. All right, cool. Either way, it don't matter. <laughs> so we lived. We've got some spells. Our caster, I'm a cleric. Our caster, Gerard Gaspard, has full health. I don't even know how to get more food or oil. Maybe I reset that. Is that what it says before your next thing? You get you can reset that. Um, remove all shaded pips on the keys and levers track, and remove all shaded clock faces from the time track. Repair items. The player can remove any number of shared pips on the items track to remove. Sell items. Buy needed items. Some items are essential and are needed for, oh, I'm not even showing it. Some items are essential and needed for next adventure. The player may buy a maximum of 20 plus the adventurer's rep value of items from the end table needed by paying the goal cost listed. There it is. So, there it, this is the table I gave a hoot about. Do I have to roll on this damn thing? I don't want to. I just want to pick. Let me see. I gotta read this again. Optional. Some items are essential and are needed. The player may buy a maximum of 20 plus the adventurer's rep value of items from the end table by paying the gold cost listed and adding them to the adventure sheet. Okay, so you can roll on this if you want. Gotcha. Alright, so I need to buy... Yep, it's it's plus one. So I need to buy three food. So that's 30 gold. I need to buy eight oil. Right? That's good math. One hundred twenty-five gold. So that leaves me four seventy-seven. Get me all the oil back, and I never used any. I used one pick. I don't know why that was down there. It should have been at fifteen. Uh, so it's a 14. I'm not gonna buy any picks. I'll watch. Yeah, I'll watch it, Mike. I'll definitely watch it. I need potions.
Um, I need lesser healing potions. Because this is going to be a tough fight coming up. All right, whatever we do next. 90 gold each. No, 80 gold each. So 240 gold. Leaving me with 237 with three lesser healing potions. And I'll do the usual one on the belt, two in the bag. That, 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 we got we've got how much gold we have left over? Two hundred thirty-seven. So I've got two hundred and thirty-seven gold left. At the end of the day, I'm gonna look in the investments and probably use two hundred of that to invest in something. But this is our adventure sheet at the end of it, so I'm gonna look into the investments and see what that looks like. But we're okay. We're okay. The dexterity thing really helped. So we're we're all right. I need to bump up strength to just kind of make it so that I miss less, but I now hit harder. So whatever I roll here, it'll be a four plus two, so that'll be six. If I explode, it'll be whatever, 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 which is good. And then we got our spells to cast. Are they back with this crap again? All right, I'm gonna have to turn on. Um, what what you would call it? This is getting silly. Yep, they're spamming. Put user in time. I should have deleted everything. Hide user on the channel. Yep. Spam me all you want now, you jerk. You've been reported. All right. So I know it's a bot. I know it's a bot. But that's so annoying and really disrespectful. All right, cool. Before I get spammed with ridiculous stuffs, um, let's uh, let's call. Let's see what's let's head up to the top. So that was D one hundred dungeon. Um, as you can see, it was blinged out. There was a lot of stuff that was on there. If you choose not to, and let me let me do this real quick. Go. Here. Here, no, not there. Here, if you choose, if you choose not to buy the bling out because you're like, I don't need all the fancy, you can actually go once you buy, once you get the game, right? The PDF. If you do version two point two, it's free. So once you get the game, or if you buy the latest version, which is three point two, um, you'll get these handy sheets, and this is what I was using for combat rounds to kind of say what happens, the reaction table and stuff. Uh, the monster abilities to say what happens, which is the breakdown. This is the adventure sheet, and you'll see it's different than 2.2. Um, the combat track here. This is the thing I'm talking about. You, this is all you have to really print out. This. Right? You print this out. And therefore, you can draw from there. <laughs> exactly. And the um, maps... They kind of tell you how I run it. And mapping. Here we go. This is all this is pretty much what you need. That's what I've been playing with on the table. Mine is just printed out to use. You can actually, if you want to, if you don't want to go to Game Crafters or buy, you can buy this. This is called the dungeon mapping. Uh, it's this, which is called the mapping game, the dungeon mapping game that comes with that stuff as well as the cards and the tokens and all that other stuff. If you want to get that, you like this is sold on on um, on the MK Games website for you to get. However, if you're like, well, what if I just want to print them out myself? Um, we go to Drive Through RPG, and we go to D100 Dungeon. Screen. And you go in here, all that stuff isn't like that is 
that's in this book so you can do you know some some paint some photoshop work to get it printed out from here or uh you can come down here to this one to this which is a watermark p which is a pdf for 15.93 so you don't have to spend more right you just spend 15.93 and you get the PDFs. Let me see if I can. They're only going to show the front page, aren't they? Yeah. You get the PDFs and then print them out on your printer and cut them out and use them. Just get cardstock paper and print them out. So if you're like, well, Game Crafters, if we go to Game Crafters, not Game Found, Game Crafters, and we do, uh, you want Dungeon. And we go to the mapping game and we look at that price point and say, holy crap, it's $56.99. That's ridiculous. I don't want to pay that much for it. You don't have to. You do not have to do this, right? Go to Drive Through RPG, download the print and play for fifteen for fifteen ninety three. For fifteen ninety three, download the print and play. Print it out. You've just saved yourself a ton of money, right? Get some cardstock paper, which is if you go to Amazon and go to cart and look up their cardstock price, it's super cheap for cardstock paper. Print it out on your printer at home for a lot cheaper than that. That's all I'm saying. It's like, don't feel like you have to pay this amount of money at all to get these tiles. Don't do it. Don't pay the $56.99. Save that for another board game. Pay $15.93 or $16, bucks, right? Splitting hairs. $16. Bucks, and then just print out those tiles. You'll get, with this, with this thing, you get more than the tiles. You get the tiles. You get the cards. And you get the token. Print them out. <laughs> and, and use them. Um, this mat, I believe that there might be a PDF for this mat. Yep, here it is. <laughs> There's a PDF for the mat. So instead of going to here and saying, okay, this costs $18.99, and I have to wait for it to get shipped to me, $18.99, why? Pay six bucks for this and print it out. <laughs> Get an A4 size paper, print it out on your printer, and that's what you got. So if if anyone considers a barrier to entry to be a monetary cost perspective, and I'm not saying that everybody could play it and oh that's super cheap and everybody should be able, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you're looking at this game and you're interested in it from a monetary perspective. And you go to Game Crafter and you're saying this, oh, this is $18.99, and the entire mapping game is $56.99. That's the price of a new board game just for the components alone, even if I get the print and play for free. That's the price of a of a board game that I can buy that doesn't have as much math in it. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't don't pay that much. Don't pay that much at all. Like say screw that. I'm not going to pay that. Go to drive through RPG. Pay 6 bucks, print the map out on large paper, on A4 paper, right? Um and if you want the the mapping stuff, everything that comes with the mapping stuff, 16 bucks. So pay 16 bucks plus what? 6 bucks? So 32? 32 dollars. And you get everything. So just that's what I'm saying. Just consider if you're interested, there is a lower price point for you to get the bling. There's a lower price. Point. If you don't want the bling and you're like, I, I I don't need that, I'll just do it with paper. Check it out. 13 bucks and you got the game. Or or if you're like, I don't need version 3.2 because the armor stuff is stupid. <laughs> then go to BGG. Ignore this guy, this this Derek guy. He's an idiot. 
But go to BGG on D100, go to their files, and bam, free game. Print it out. 100% free. I'll click on this right now so you can see it pop up. Print and play version 2.2. .2. Look, it's the exact same stuff. Create your character. Um, you know, skill test. It talks about the experience track. It talks about lives instead of, uh, you know, that instead of whatever it is. There's the hit location blocks. All the stuff. There's the, here's the combat, the quest that you'll choose. And then, go to this. Oh, they didn't index it. That's cruel. That's cruel that you didn't index this. But anyway, here are the tables. Here are all the tables that you need for everything that you need to roll. Hey, look, here's the map sheets, parts, all that good stuff. Here's the handy sheet reference. And here is the old character sheet. Free, right? So if you're like, well, if I want the game and I want to bling it out, but I want to spend 30 bucks. Go to drive through RPG, print that stuff out, come over here, get the game for free. Tell Martin Knight, you're amazing, and thank you for creating such an awesome game. And here you go. <laughs> so just keep that in mind for anyone interested in this game and want to get in on it and saying, I need to be, you know, I want to be smart with my cash. I don't want to spend a ton of money. Um, what is the cheapest that I can get in on this game? There you go. And, and I want a little bit of... The cheap is free. But if you're like, well, what's the cheapest that I can have tactile components that I can touch and play and feel? There you go. It's there, right? If you're like, this game's great and I want to support the dev, there you go. Come in, you know, what the money that you pay here, um, Martin Knight's going to get a cut of that. Or drive through RPG will take their cut. And in Grain Crafters... Game, I mean, uh, yeah, Game Crafters, they're going to take their cut, and then Martin's going to get some money as well. So he will, how, whichever path you strikes your fancy that you feel that you would like to go, the options are there. Varying options in this, in, in this specific space. So just, just, some, just some food for thought. Just some food for thought when it comes to, um, when it comes to that stuff, right? All right. <sighs> okay. I hope, I really, really hope, and let me see if y'all have just been like, I hate that guy, I'm out of here. No, oh, y'all are still here with me. So that's nice. That's nice. Y'all are still here with me. So I hope that this has given you some insight into some of the print and plays that are out there. I'm not done. We've still got more, more game, more print and play roll and write games to play. But you, I, I just want to give you the best option. For your for your buck, right? If if you if you have discretionary funds and you are able to just say, I could bling out, I don't mind, then you can, you know, go to Game Crafters, get the neoprene mat, get the get the pre ship cards and the tokens and all that other stuff and the the gem thing and the doohickeys and bling it out, bling out your game, make it amazing and go on an adventure and roll dice 10 times better than I did, please. <laughs> if you're like, well, I need to be a little bit more modest with money, I just, I, I can't throw out like that, which is perfectly cool. Or, but, but you're like, damn, I want this game, I think it's going to be fun, I think it's going to be a hit, 30 bucks, and the cost of paper, and, you know, your printer, your time on a printer, right? But um, able to do that, you'll get it. I won't be playing this game without the channel, though. Yeah, yeah, that's fine, Mike. That's fine. But I know there are others out there who, who won't mind it and might find some enjoyment on it. Um, so, but 30 bucks, print out your own stuff, and you're, and you're good to go. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. All right. This one was a doozy. <laughs> this one was a doozy for me. My, my, my impressions of D100 Dungeon. What I don't like. That you have to pay for each health re recover. It's too. It, that's too much bookkeeping, right? Usually, it's like it costs this much as an. I mean, even in D and D, you don't do that. You. My first complaint is the health cost thing. Um, even in Dungeons and Dragons, you don't do that. There's a one in cost. This is how much it costs to rest. Take a long rest at an inn. 
And when you pay that money, you you get full health. That that paying per health, I, I do not agree with. Um when it comes to You just bought the BZ. You just bought. That's awesome. That's awesome. No problem. When it comes to, um, when it comes to combat, I need more. I need more mitigation, right? Um, you got you got damage enhancement. So this is the one thing that that may make a few people shy away from, right? Is that I, maybe I don't. I, I haven't leveled up high enough to get it but I shouldn't have to, if that makes sense. I need to be able to mitigate my attack rolls to hit you. The plane out, you need to hit 50 on a straight dice roll or you're screwed. Um, being able to get weapons and finding weapons that adds damage to what you roll, that's great. It mitigates your your damage, but there's nothing to mitigate your attack roll. It's just it is what it is. <laughs> That's true, Brian. That's true. Um, so that is my second bright. Um, what's my next one? I I my my positives of this game. Uh, and I'll go through each one. Th those were the two ones that stood out to me to be like, ugh. Uh, but my positives for this one are finding new items, taking damage in locations, and then, and then kind of damaging the weapon to mitigate more damage. Your damage mitigation is there. The damage mitigation is great, as long as you have an item in the slot. <laughs> but that's how it plays. That's how it plays. It's an open area, an open area that you get hit. So damage mitigation, top notch. You can you can block it. This AS first defense, you gotta fix that, right? If saying that it's a defensive aura that's around you, that's the only way my brain was able to make sense of what the hell the defense is versus armor shield column. Like, I don't know why that was changed. I I I, I struggle. I struggle because that is confusing as hell. And anybody who's getting into this game will be confused by it. So I think it needs something else to come off with, right? That's just, it's, it's odd. I think that's the best way I can put it. It's odd. Like, the monsters. Like, look at the monster cards. The monster cards have a defensive number on them. This monster has five defense. It's not five defense to his arm, two defense to his leg, one defense to his head. It just has five defense. Stick with that. Stick with that, please. Um, once again, there are people who are diehard fans of this game. I, I, I do not mean to insult. This is just my feedback and my mind take on this, that the splitting up this defense based on where you get hit, eh, I'm more of the, like, even Kingdom Death Monster doesn't do that. Right? It's like, you get hit in the head. Do you have any defense to mitigate that? Nope. Take, take a head trauma. Do you? Okay, count that off. Saying that you get hit in a specific location is fine. Specific armor values to that location, I don't agree with. But that's, that's my take on it. Um, so the, 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 the spells are cool. The skills, it's D&D. &D. Um, the beauty of... Creating a character and having them live long enough to become what you want. A dragoon, a warlock, a druid, a whatever. Having them turn into those based on your choices is beautiful. This is the blank slate class thing that you need. And you build your character around that. Top, mark. Top marks. Top marks on that. Um... The oil, food, picks, poison, disease, the time track, I like all of it. I like all of it, all of it. The encounter modifier, that is amazing because you don't want level ones running into a dragon. So it, it, it will kill the fun. So doing that to mitigate the encounters, 
good on you. Thought, thought not. Um, I like more ability. I'll say that because I've got mighty blow, which lets me lets me explode dice, and I got spellcraster, which lets me cast spells. But I don't have anything else past that. Those are like the only abilities I get. I'd like to have a little more. I'd like to have a little more more abilities. That would be helpful. Uh, the amount of quests that you have in here is amazing for just the base game without them buying any other content. Top note. So I've been going kind of pros, cons, pros, cons. Pros. Overall, good game. Overall, it's a good game. It's a true good solo dungeon crawl that, that has a lot of replayability. I want to continue playing with Gerard to see when he dies. <laughs> but overall, it's a good game. It, it, it plays well. Um, my cons are, are, the, are the attack roll. You, we got to have a way to mitigate that. I'm a, I'm a crap dice roller. So there are plenty of times where I'll just spend time just doing like, nope, 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 nope. Mm -mm. Oh, the monster escaped. Oh, look, another monster. Nope. No, nope. there's got to be something to help mitigate dice roll. That's, that's all I'm saying. Work on that. Get rid of this defense and AS stuff and just give us one defense column. Add it up over, over whatever it is so we can... But, but damage mitigation is there. And putting damage on weapons at hit locations to reduce damage more, I love it. I think that's great. Give me more abilities. Um more like unlocked abilities to do to do really cool stuff right to really open up the different classes that people want to build um i even like the belt break ability i think that's pretty funny it's cruel but it's funny um i think that's it that's really it so where do i rank this game um from the print plays i've played so far i've played voyages and i've played four against the dark as of right now, I like Four Against the Darkness more than D100. As of right now. So let me, before people break out their pitchforks, I've only played the tr one, two of the trainers, and I was going to play the other two today, but I, I jumped into a dungeon. So I played two of the trainers and this one. And on Four Against the Darkness, I played through one of the entire storybook. And I like Four Against the Darkness more for the narrative so far does that make sense um so for a narrative perspective it's winning out um in terms of just kind of fun in terms of die mitigation voyages because you know you you, you throw sailors overboard and you slip their throat or make them walk the plank or feed them to the sharks or the kraken and you're able to mitigate dice so it has better dice mitigation um but overall overall between the three Four Against Darkness is, is winning so far. That, but I want to play more of this, actually play against some, some really, um, you know, continue to play through some dungeons and see how it feels. What's going to offset this for some people? Um, it's a dungeon crawl, plain and simple, which means a lot of people who are like, well, I, you know, it's going to feel a cool ability would be. Yeah, it, it would be interesting to see what happens. Um, it's a dungeon. It, it's basically you roll dice, you check a table, you draw on a map or draw a tile card, you face a monster, roll some dice. There's a lot of dice rolling. You're walking through different rooms. You could walk through the same room. You could walk into a room with a dead end. And, uh, it, uh, it's just... I think it, they, some people could feel that it's a little samey, um, but that doesn't bother me. Hell, I play, I play so many dungeon crawls, eh, <laughs> it doesn't bug me. This, this has fun in it. It has a lot of potential. I think it'll be good. So I'll say, if you like dungeon crawls and you like bookkeeping, because you will do a roll dice. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, okay, table J. Roll dice. Uh, what does that mean? Okay, I'm going to cover this thing. Okay. 
Find uh find the monster. Okay, let me look at what the monster has to do. Okay, the monster has abilities. Let me look in the paper to see what type of abilities the monster has. Okay, it has that. Okay. Roll I'm gonna roll oh wait, I gotta roll reaction. Let me look in the book to see like what reactions it's gonna have. Roll a die. Okay, it's just gonna attack me. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna roll some dice. I roll, let me check the character sheet to make sure I hit. Um if I hit, roll some more dice. Okay, roll some dice. What does the what's the enemy do again? Go back to the paper. So there is bookkeeping. If someone's in the mindset of, I don't want to be broken out of a narrative to play a game. So, for instance, what's a game that I could, that I could say you stay pretty straight into it? I guess this War of Mine could be one where it's, okay, it's my turn to do, the dawn has come. Choose my action. I do this, I do this, I do this. I'm in the narrative. Or I go out and I gotta look on look in this book to read the narrative to stay in the narrative. It's not that. You will be going back and forth between the tables and and the and the the map. So if you're okay with that, this game's for you. If you're okay with you build your own story. There's no story here until you get the next book, which has a story in it, right? The next adventure book has a story in it. So if you do that, you should be fine there. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Basically, to me, because I play through the story of Four Against Darkness, I like it more because there's a good narrative. There probably is a good narrative in here that I create, and that's pretty much it. All right. Ugh. All right, we're cool, we're cool, we're cool. All right, thanks everybody for joining me. I hope you enjoyed uh, D100 Dungeon. What's coming up next is Tuesday. I'm getting back to Zerequia. I'm going to be going through the Str the Strabog, the Heart of Strabog campaign. So we'll be playing through that on Tuesday. Um, Thursday, Pac-Man's back. So we're going to be getting back into Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Whatever that looks like. With Steven and, and Pac-Man. Um, Friday... Because I usually stream with Rob on Rob's gaming table to play through Gloomhaven Digital with him, but he's off. So I'm going to be streaming uh, Kate, Cynthia, and myself go through uh, Gloomhaven Digital on my channel. And we're basically playing to retire their two characters and unlock more. So um, I put in my Discord um, for my Patreons to say, hey, does anybody want to join? Let me know. And, and you know, they can pop in and play with us. So that's Friday. Saturday is One Stop Co-op Chop Chat. And Sunday, we're going to be playing Woods. We're going to be playing Woods. So that ought to be good. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff coming this week. Um, if you like what you see, uh, if you like what you're seeing so far, you like, you like what you see, I know I've probably made some mistakes in here, but um, hit that like, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to know when new stuff's coming up. And... I'm going to get the 800 sub stream, whatever that may be, scheduled fairly soon. So look for that coming out in the coming weeks, and we'll have a good time. But until then, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Thank you, my Patreons. Thank you, my YouTube subscribers. If you are neither, and you are just coming to check me out to see if I annoy the life out of you, thank you for letting me annoy the life out of you for a little bit and see my bad rolls. So welcome. Thank you. I thank you as well. Um, except for that stupid bot. I hate that bot. I don't want to thank that bot. Um, but other than that, thanks so much, everybody. I appreciate it. Have a good rest of the weekend, and I will see you all later. Insert commoner slogan here. See you all later. Bye-bye.